Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Rock Springs High School, home of the Tigers, where the Evanston Red Devil soccer team is back in 4A West Conference action. Elon off, joined by my good friend and broadcast partner, Matthew Peterson. Matthew, last time these Red Devils were on the pitch, it was a 5-0 victory over the Wranglers of Pinedale. Uh, how big is that when it comes to confidence factor returning to 4A West Conference? Play. Yeah, sure thing. There's a big confidence boost. You come off a 5-0 victory regardless of your opponent, but you, you got to take it with a little bit of grain of salt. You're going up against a non-conference smaller opponent in a division below you, so that's something you got to keep in mind because Rock Springs is not Pinedale, so if Evanston thinks they can come in here and just coast off of last week's victory, they may get punched in the mouth early, and on the road, that's not a good place for that to happen. Absolutely not. Well, we are mere minutes away from the start of this one. The boys will play first at 3 o'clock, girls at 5 o'clock. When we come back, we will set the scene for the boys matchup, Evanston versus Rock Springs, on our first Make of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer on MyLocalRadio.com. There's a reason. Rocky Mountain Yeti is Southwest Wyoming's number one dealer. Come in and see what all the buzz is about. Voted Best of Evanston by you. Best of Evanston in new car sales, used car sales, and Best of Evanston in service. We have the best selection of inventory in town. Paired with our legendary 20-year, 200,000-mile warranty, come see us today at one of our two locations, 100 Wasatch Road or Yeti on 3rd next to Walmart. Let us help get you on your next adventure today. Rocky Mountain Yeti, legend-driven. This first Bank of Wyoming broadcast of Evanston Basketball is brought to you in part by Hoover Chiropractic. Dr. Todd Hoover does all the chiropractic work you need, as well as blood work, dietary supplements, a weight loss program, x-rays, and he can help you get rid of migraines and allergies. Call Hoover Chiropractic at 307-789-0043. Welcome back to Rock Springs High School. I want to apologize. We are having some connection issues here. We are recording the game right here as well, so we will have a uninterrupted version of the game airing on uh, available on mylocalradio.com after the conclusion of the girls' game. So apologies if uh, it's not the smoothest uh, broadcast that we have. Anyway, let's go and set the scene. Pine, or sorry, Evanston versus Rock Springs here in Rock Springs. The Tigers currently come in with a record of two wins and two draws, it looks two like. Two losses. Or two losses, excuse me. Currently looking to get that uh, first conference win. They lost 6-1 to one to Jackson in their last game. Of course, Evanston beat the Pinedale Wranglers 5-0 their last game on Friday. Again, want to apologize. Um... If uh, the broadcast is not the same connection in the same quality or you, you are used to, we are having some connection issues here in Rock Springs. But Matthew, uh, what is the key to Evanston kind of putting that big win that they had on Friday against Pinedale behind them and moving forward to make sure they can make this happen today against Rock Springs? So you got two teams coming in today that are coming from completely opposite directions. You look at the home Rock Springs Tigers, they're coming off a 6-1 loss at Jackson. Meanwhile, Evanston a 5-0 victory at Pinedale. So two different directions altogether. But for Evanston and for Rock Springs, what it'll come down to is who's able to remind themselves, brand new game, brand new match, put the last one behind us. Because if you're Rock Springs here, you don't want to dwell on that 6-1 loss to Jackson that's a really strong Jackson uh, program up in northwest Wyoming. And then as for Evanston, you don't want to try and coast off of your accomplishments last week. Every pitch, every match is a completely new opportunity. So looking at the keys for the game here and what's going to be at stake for the Red Devils to pick up their third victory of the season. How about you go back to the hot foot, Michael Lichty. I mean, he's up to four goals on the season already. A couple assists sprinkled in as well. So feed the hot foot but also don't zone in on him and that's something we talked about in the devil yell earlier this morning elon which is when kelly walsh was able to take michael lichty out of the match against them the red devils really struggle to find an offensive identity you got to be balanced but also don't stray away from him don't try and do too much go to what works 
Red Devil Soccer is brought to you on MyLocalRadio.com by Auto Farm Chevrolet, Dr. McKay Frankham, West Star Printing, Rocky Mountain Yeti, Hoover Chiropractic, Evanston Regional Hospital, the Come On In and Casper, Plains Tire, Mountain West Business Solutions, the Best Western Dunmar Inn and Legal Tender Restaurant, Freeway Tire, Rocky Mountain Sign, Uinta County School District Number 1, Ellingford Brothers, Toronto Valley Federal Credit Union, Bear River Dental, and by T Bar S Body Shop. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have more of our pregame coverage live from Rock Springs, Evanston versus the Tigers on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer on MyLocalRadio.com. Time flies, especially when you're having fun. This is Jeremy Rex, manager at TBRS in Evanston. It's hard to believe that we've been here almost a year with our new management team and staff. Did you know that you can have your vehicle detailed, your windshield replaced, ship repair done, or get your trailer refinished or rewired at TBRS? Of course, we are a full-service collision repair shop, too. You can even change your oil and your brakes. Visit TBRS today. Let T-Bar fix your car. 515 County Road, Evanston. Wyoming is unique. When it comes to high school sports, we might travel six hours to a game, but when we get there, we know the other team, their parents, and the coaches. Wyoming is like one small town with really long streets. When your travels take you to Evanston, always stay with your friends at the Best Western Dunmar Inn. Clean, comfortable rooms, a restaurant serving healthy, delicious food, and breakfast is always included. If you're bringing the team or following the team, stay with us every time you're in Evanston. The Best Western Dunmar Inn. I want to invite you to utilize that MyLocalRadio.com chat room. That is the place to root on your favorite Red Devils. We have Donna Bruce and, of course, Kakoop. In other words, the parents and family of Evanston soccer player, standout foreign exchange student, Yorick Lacaz, joining us live from Germany. Thank you so much. We missed being here, too. Uh, for those that did not hear, we uh, had some, uh, wouldn't say technical difficulties on the way to the Pinedale game. But definitely things that made it impossible uh, to broadcast that game. So we are happy to be back. We are about eight minutes away from the start. We're going to step aside and we come back. We'll have Coach Brian Richens of the Evanston Red Devils on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Evanston Soccer on MyLocalRadio.com. Evanston Regional Hospital is an affiliate of the University of Utah Health. Our partnership builds on a long tradition of collaboration between Evanston Regional Hospital and University of Utah Health. Inside these doors, our dedicated staff is committed to being your caring partner in your healthcare journey. Whether you need an MRI or surgery, are expecting a new baby, or you're having a heart attack, Evanston Regional Hospital is here to help. Evanston Regional Hospital, healing begins here. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I had just purchased new tires at Plains Tire in Evanston. The trained tire technicians at Plains Tire expertly mounted, balanced, and aligned my new tires, so I was feeling good. While I was there, they changed my oil, checked my brakes, fixed my AC, and made sure my shocks were in tip-top shape. And with their lifetime alignment checks and tire rotations, I was ready to roll. So, thanks to Plains Tire, when two roads diverged in a wood, I took the one less travel. Plains Tire, 157 Fair River Drive, Evanston. Here with Evanston Boys Soccer Head Coach Brian Richens. Coach Richens, you guys returned to conference play after a successful 5-0 victory in Pinedale. This, uh, this time it's going to be Rock Springs, and that gets started Tuesday at 5 o'clock at Rock Springs. I believe that's going to be at the junior high school. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, Evanston versus the Tigers, it's another rivalry game. It's one that's got a lot of history behind it. With this year being so odd and there's not a lot of film out on teams, uh, how are you guys preparing for this match? <laughs> yeah, we, we're not preparing for Rock Springs because we don't know what Rock Springs brings. Uh, we are m mostly working on ourselves. Um, we're trying to just refine. I, I was really, really happy going back and looking at the tape um, from Saturday. I was really happy with the, the ideas my team had. Um, there's a few execution errors and things like that, but, but really overall it was a really good game for us and we got better and we got our confidence back a little bit and and so we're just going to try to refine that stuff I, we, i'd like to see us play wide a little better um we haven't had any defined fields um up until this point so our width is a little as a little um 
lacking. We've been going straight down the middle quite a bit. So we've got some lines on our fields here in town now, and so we can get on it and practice getting to width and hopefully get our wings a little wider um, just to give ourselves a little more space. So that's going to be sort of our concentration. But, yeah, overall, um, really good game on Friday and, and a good springboard into this into this little conference run. Coach, now as we look at Rock Springs, it's kind of hard also not to look back and look at the previous conference matches. You guys have a current conference record of one win, one loss, and one draw. Uh, but you guys went out and did a very good job against Pinedale. What was the biggest difference you saw in the boys between the loss to Kelly Walsh and the win against Pinedale? Well, we were able to find a lot more space in the midfield than um, than Kelly Walsh gave us. Um and so with, with that space, we were able to then, you know, create our attacking opportunities. I thought our midfield did a really nice job of winning balls and, and really taking balls off of Pinedale's midfield. And I, and I hope that we can continue to build on that success. The other thing is we, instead of going straight forward every time we found some gaps behind the, the defensive um, outside backs from, from Pinedale and, and found some success there, Ramon did a great job assisting the goal to Ulysses and, and actually had the opportunity to assist at several more goals that we didn't, we didn't finish. Um, but the fact that he became such a big part of our, of our offense um, was helpful. And then to get Dante on the board was good, you know, find some different scores, get some confidence there was good. You know, I thought Caden Wiley and, and Curtis took a lot of shots and neither one of them ended up scoring, but they were, they were shooting from, from distance. And so we were just able to build some confidence back and uh, in the midfield. When you look at everyone on this team, I mean, goal scoring wise, stats wise, it's early in the season, but we can talk about it. Micah Lichty and Curtis Richens currently lead the team. Uh, how important, as you said, getting Dante on the board, how important is it to have multiple weapons that teams need to pay attention to? I think it's really good for that. And I think it's really good for us as a, as a unit to have some confidence that, you know, even if, you know, one of our guys may be not scoring, other guys can contribute, and, and I think that's important. Um, you never know when an injury is going to crop up or you know when something's going to go sideways, and, and a, a team that's reliant on one player, then you know that one player can be taken away either by a good defense or other, other things. And so it's nice to have a balanced team. It also helps uh, everyone's – mojo kind of keep going you know what i mean like they're they're hungry for goals and, and they want to work for those things and they know that they can get them and so it's it's good to have that balance um around the board you know we got omar who's an outside back got on the scoring sheet against pinedale with just a long cross i'm, I'm sure he's going to say from now on that it was a shot but i'm not sure he, i can be convinced of that but anyway it went in anyway <laughs> um and and so just yeah just Having people understand that they can all contribute and that they all are weapons, um, I think really makes a makes for a it makes for a dangerous team for other teams, but it also makes for a confident team on our side. Coach, I know you said it yourself. You know nothing about the Rock Springs of twenty twenty one. But what can you tell us that Rock Springs historically is like that are some things that we may need to keep an eye on? You know, they historically have always had a player or two up top that are really dangerous. You know, that they they play the ball too a lot of times and that 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 player causes a lot of trouble um they've also in in the past had a really strong central defense their central defenders have been really good and um so well i would expect to see that again the other thing is you know similar to natrona and kelly walsh they're a big school they've got a lot of kids and so you expect to see good athletes on the field um, and then I know their club program, the Avengers program, is, has done well in tournaments around the state for years. And so you, you find good athletes that also have quite a bit of skill. So we'll be, we'll be, I mean, we'll be facing the same kind of things we saw with Natona and Kelly Walsh um, in a lot of ways. That's Coach Brian Richens, head coach for Evanston Boys Soccer. Coach, thank you so much for the time. Good luck against Rock Springs. We'll be rooting you on. Anything else? No, that's it. We'll look forward to seeing you and, and getting back on the coverage. We appreciate it. Evanston Red Devil Soccer is back on MyLocalRadio.com. After a one-week break, we are less than a minute from kickoff. We're going to step aside and we come back. Kickoff between Evanston and Rock Springs in 4A West Conference play on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer on MyLocalRadio.com. In May of 2000. 
2019, Uinta County School District Number 1 became the first school district in Wyoming to achieve a certified Level 1 on high reliability schools by the Rosanna Leadership Center. We're focusing on three levels. Level 1 is a safe and collaborative culture. Level 2, effective teaching in every classroom. And Level 3 is a guaranteed and viable curriculum. We are certified Level 1 in safe and collaborative culture. This is Superintendent Ryan Thomas. Congratulations to everyone in our district. Keep up the great work. Uinta County School District Number 1, Pathway to Excellence. Gee, Tommy, you look amazing. Did you try something different with your enamel? No way. I wouldn't do anything to alter these pearly whites, but I did see Dr. McKay Franco, who told me if I didn't floss, I could miss up 35% of food particles. Really? He told you that? Yep, and you know what? He's 100% right. I started flossing, and now I look better than ever. Wow, I want to see Dr. McKay Franco. Well, give him a call. 307-789-8910. Easy to remember, right? That's super easy. Dr. McKay Franco at 307-789-8910. I'll call today. When you want something custom built for your home, farm and ranch, vehicle or trailer, it needs to be done with precision, be strong and be affordable. Get all this and more when you work with the Steel Shop at Ellingford Brothers. You bring the plan or idea and they'll make it a reality. The Steel Shop sells and installs vehicle accessories like bull bars, running boards and bed liners. They also specialize in truck and trailer hitches as well. Get it built to last. Ellingford Brothers, 221 County Road in Evanston. National anthem has been sung, and Matthew, why don't you give us our starting lineup for the Evanston Red Devils? Yeah, let's check out the starting 11 for Evanston. They're going to send out the usual goalkeeper, Rylan Worley, and what a strong start to the season Rylan's had so far. In front of Rylan, he's got his defender, Derek Johnson. At the top, we have Micah Lichty, a senior, followed by fellow seniors, Ramon Rivera and Dante Sinche. Sinche coming off a goal appearance in the first of the season last week. Curtis Richens is right in the middle, followed by junior Caden Wiley. Ulysses Saints, also a goal scorer against the Wranglers last week. He takes the start at the senior level. And then Peyton Cornea, the sweeper at the back, followed by defender and midfielder Omar Burgos. And that is the starting 11 for the 
Brian Richens managed Evanston Red Devils, who come in with two wins, one win, two wins, one draw, and one loss. Looking for that second win in the conference and picking up three points in conference play. Currently sit tied for second in the West. Let's go ahead and introduce you to the Rock Springs Tigers. You have Jesus Duarte, Connor Panzer, Mario Mendoza, Jeff Hyatt, Braden Davies, Number four, sorry, Jesus Hudson Duarte. Davies. Number 16, Aiden Hernandez. Number, number five, 17, junior, Carson Curtis. Carson number 21, Hanger. Josh Sosa. And number 22, junior, number seven, junior Ben Meeks. Mario Mendoza. Hudson Conrad, the goalkeeper, will number be in nine, there for the Rock Springs Tigers. Only a sophomore, so senior number keeper 11, for Evanston. Junior, sophomore keeper for Rock Springs. Number 16, sophomore. Hernandez. Right now, trying to Number we're uh, trying to give you guys an idea Curtis, of what the uh, Sorry about that. Uh, time Number is. Josh Sosa. Yeah, always a little difficult getting Freshman that scoreboard Freshman camera right on the time, but it looks like we're getting ready for and the finally, kickoff here between senior. Evanston and Rock Evan Springs. Whitman. These two schools only. An hour and a half enjoy, apart, but yeah. not usual common opponents every now and then, but they're going to face off twice this season, once at home and once right here, right now. Wyoming well, works a little bit differently. Only the top 10 schools in all of the state get to compete at the highest division in football. Evanston, not in that top 10. Rock Springs is, so football is the only sport that Rock Springs and Evanston do not show down at. We see them in volleyball. We see them in basketball. And now we see them in soccer. And, of course, we'll see them a lot when baseball starts up. Yeah, and 10 more days. 10 more days, yeah. Crazy to think about that baseball is season is right around the corner. Major it may League. not look like baseball weather, but then again, on opening day in Detroit, it was it snowing. It was snowing, yeah. So that's uh, part of the, the game. Let's go ahead and get back to the task at hand, and that is the beautiful game of soccer happening right before our eyes as the train rolls by in the background here at Tiger Stadium in Rock Springs High School. It'll be Rock Springs' Brayden Davies who's playing forward to kick it away for the Tigers as they are in the black, Evanston in the white. Rock Springs will be moving from right to left and Evanston from left to right on MyLocalRadio.com. Whistle blows and we are underway here in conference match number four for the Evanston Red Devils. Keep in mind, there's only two more conference matches between now and the halfway point of the season. That's hard to believe, isn't it? Yep, seven teams in the conference, home and away, and a couple non-conference sprinkled in like this upcoming Thursday, which will be the home debut for these Red Devils as they take on another Bridger Valley foes in the Mountain View Buffaloes. Trying to look for Lichty in the attacking third, but Rock Springs and Evanston currently having a battle in that center part of the field to kind of let things shake out a little bit, not even a minute into this one. Free kick coming for the Tigers. Good block there. I believe that was Ramon Rivera, but I'm not sure. I'll double check on the number. It might have been Burgos. No, it was Dante Sinche. He's the ball hander. Goes right side to Rivera, but taken away by Rock Springs. A little sloppiness on the back line for Rock Springs, presenting an opportunity now for Evanston early on in the attacking third. As of the last stat report reported by Y.O. Preps, Hudson Conrad, the keeper for Rock Springs, has the most saves in the state at 40. Second place, Rylan Worley with 23. So that tells you maybe the back line might be somewhere that Evanston can attack a little bit. But right now, a good through ball looking for Davies. Back out to Sosa. Played in by Duarte. It's out of bounds. Nice job by Peyton Cornea to kind of sweep it out. He's been doing that all season, though. He's been kind of the sweeper for Coach Brian Richens. An important role, especially. I mean, especially when you look into how uh, Coach Richens wants to field this team. He's going to have the defense bottleneck and force its way and filter down to Cornea. So the buck stops with him. He's got to clear it out. There's no one after him. Burgos goes Richens on the right side. And taken away by Mendoza. Rock Springs has to get it back to that back row. Evanston doing a good job kind of keeping it there. As uh, 
really, it does look like Rock Springs may have the advantage on possession, but Evanston has not really given them any opportunities. However, we are early as we're only in the third minute of play. Through ball back side to Panzer. Omar Burgos on pursuit of number nine, Jeff Hyatt. Right side, back to Mendoza in the center. Curtis Richens playing tough defense on him, kicked away by Derek Johnson, and cleared up and at him by Carson Curtis. Good through ball and a chance for Rock Springs. Junior Benetz in the far corner. It goes over the end line, and it will be a corner kick. First set piece of the game for any side, and Rock Springs with a chance to get on the board first. Set pieces are a great way to check out how a team likes to set up. Let's see what the approach is. Watch, we got four Tigers crashing in, but the cross on the corner way too high for any head. Wind is blowing slightly from goal to goal, so that might have something to do with having to correct that. That ball was kicked pretty high in the windy conditions. Of course, you want to get that low, but it's not really howling like what we saw in Green River and uh, in, uh, I believe it was during the Kelly Walsh game, the wind was howling pretty good as well. Yeah, the Oil City had definitely some wind to it, but let's see what Rock Springs can bring early in April, and now a good through ball. Big chance here for Sosa. He gets a shot on goal and puts it past Rylan Worley. And Mendoza, sorry, Sosa, excuse me, puts the Tigers up 1-0 to start it off. Goal scorer for the Rock Springs Tiger, Josh Sosa, a sophomore. Couple touches, but never left Woolley with a chance. Woolley loves confronting his, his shooters, too. He loves to charge out, but that time Sosa got the better of him, and it's 1-0 Rock Springs as a result. Michael Lichty for Evanston will get ready to kick off for the Red Devils. It's got to be comforting to know, though, with... A 3-1 win over Green River and a 5-0 win. Looking at this, Ramon Rivera with a good through ball. Tries to turn it into something, but the shot is not on goal. But a good look and a good opportunity for the Red Devils. As I was mentioning, a 3-1 win over the Green River Wolves. A 3-3 draw against the Natrona, Count, uh, sorry, the Natrona County Mustangs. And a big 5-0 win over Pinedale. This team can score, so one goal is definitely not anything to stress out about if you're a Red Devil. Burgos grabbed a breather, paving the way for Lacaz to join his teammates. That'll make Armin and Gwyn very happy over in Germany. Evanston on the attack in third, but taken away by the Tigers. Another through ball and making a run is Benetz to the right side. He crosses over. Ryland Worley makes the decision to go out there and grab it. Between Sosa and Benetz, you're really starting to get an idea of how Rock Springs likes to manage their offense. They want to get it to, the, to those two guys specifically in space and allow them to capitalize on their speed. Good through ball to Micah Lichty all the way from goal. As Lacaz will... Sorry, that's not Lacaz. That was number 16, Peyton Cornia, forcing it over the line. First time all season, Red Devils have surrendered a goal early on, too. You go back to the, st to the start of this year and how their season has shaken out so far against Green River. One goal in the first half against the Red Devils, but much later on. And at Toronto County, that 3-3 draw, they didn't get going until much later. Yeah, it did. I believe it was almost a 2-0 uh, lead at half as Ramon Rivera, who was the first goal scorer of the year, Oh, he runs over a Rock Springs Tiger, and yeah. he's slow to get up. Shocked there's no whistle. I mean, he put both hands in front of him and just plowed through his opponent, Connor Panzer. Lacaz will throw it in for the Red Devils. Goes to Richens, but it's taken away. But Rivera gets it back, trying to throw it to Richens, and it's a battle in the corner, kicked out of bounds by... Carson Curtis. Lacaz will throw it in. Evanston trying to make something happen here to tie it up. Inbound looking for Lichty, but it is calmed down by the defense of Rock Springs. But Rick Lichty has it back. Richens into the box trying to get a through ball to Dante Sinche, but he couldn't catch up with the speed 
of the roller. Good throwback by Hudson Conrad. Yeah, early in the game, if you're Coach Richens, you just love creativity and ideas. Seeing an opportunity like that as the offside flag is waved, so don't worry about this attack, but that's what you're looking for. There's just under 33 minutes to go in the first half. You'll take missed opportunities like that because it shows you're starting to build something, and hopefully as the year goes along, you don't need that much time into the game to capitalize on those opportunities. Ulysses Sains will kick it back to Derek Johnson. Looks like he'll be the one to take the three, the free kick. A trio of Red Devils stacked in the far corner all around that 20-yard line. So we'll see if that's where they're going. That is indeed where they go for that group. And it's headed right towards the goal by Rock Springs. And it's off of Conrad and over the end line. It's a corner kick for Evanston. Yeah, mental mistake there by sophomore goalkeeper Hudson Conrad and gifting the Red Devils an opportunity to level the score with their first corner kick of the day. I believe it's going to be Richens that takes it for Evanston, and it is over here on this near corner. See what they can do with it. Good through ball, and Lichty tried to get ahead on it. He had a real chance there, but it'll be kind of calmed down. And still in the attacking third, Dante Sinche. Looking for Burgos, but taken away, and now headed towards the midfield, and a big kick, and a runner here. Rylan Worley pops it up high. He's way out of goal, though. It's still on the attacking third of Rock Springs, but Worley quickly retreats back. Nice moves by Jeff Hyatt. He'll be one to keep an eye on for the rest of the afternoon as yeah. we are at the 31-minute mark. Go ahead. Elon, if you go back as the offside just flag, flag is raised once again, Worley, we talked about after that first goal, he loves to be aggressive, and in that situation, he's got no choice. I mean, he is way out of his box, but if he sits back, we could be looking at a 2-0 score. Uh, a little unlucky that as the bounce came to him, it couldn't meet him at his foot and says upper thigh, and that's kind of a soccer player's nightmare. You don't want it up there. It's very difficult to clear it with the upper thigh. Sains to Sinche on the far end, but taken away, Rock Springs... And Evanston battling for this one. Mendoza. Back out to the captain, 21, Josh Sosa. He boots that one high, but Evanston's defense is able to kind of lock it out. Cornea will kick it right back to Worley. He's going to dribble around a little bit with uh, it. I'm not now sure pass what he's intercepted there. by Benedes. And a shot on goal. Good stop by Worley. Cleared out, but they're not out of danger yet. Rock Springs starting to press hard. Cross is going to be intercepted by Evanston and kicked for clear by Saints. Richens on the run, tries to make a move, but it's taken away by Junior Benedes. Is that Benedes or Diego uh, D and Whitman? 23, it is Whitman. As Derek Johnson tries to Guard the ball all the way across the sideline. Ten minutes through, it's one nothing Tigers. Or one nil, I should say. And once again, Rock Springs with a good opportunity in the offensive end. Up to the Red Devil defense to try and hold them and get themselves back on the offensive side. That's a good start right there as harassment underway by Rivera. Kick to the right side and intercepted. Cut off by... Number 12, Caden Wiley. Cornea kicks it over to the sideline. Good move there by Peyton. Yeah, great move indeed. You're going to give your chance itself to get your defense reset, put yourself where you want to be, kind of catch your breath for half a second and not be caught flat-footed or off guard. Evanston will host Mountain View later on in the week, Thursday. Boys will play at five, girls will play at three. Talk more about that at the half. As Rock Springs leads one nil here in the first half, 28 minutes remaining. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have more of the first half on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer on mylocalradio.com. 
The importance of saving and learning how to use money wisely can be taught from a very young age. At Trona Valley Federal Credit Union, we offer youth accounts to help kids learn to save, borrow, and spend responsibly. Our youth accounts are special, just like the kids in our community. Check out our See You Grow, See You Learn, and See You Prosper accounts for kids 0 to 18. These accounts are great to start managing finances. Open a youth account today for $1. TronaValley.com, member NCUA. Nothing makes your kid feel like a superstar more than seeing his or her very own fathead in the stands. Fathead car decals and yard signs are inexpensive and easy to get at Rocky Mountain Sign in Evanston. Whether it's for the big game or to cheer on the high school band, our children make us proud in so many ways. Show your pride today. Go Red Devils! West Star Printing and Rocky Mountain Sign, 243 7th Street, Evanston. Welcome back to Tiger Stadium, Evanston Trails, one to nil here against Rock Springs and 4A West Conference play. York Lacaz though with a great steal and he's got room to work with. Nice cut back. The Evanston JV team loves that. Kick out to Ramon Rivera at the 20. Rivera trying to find somewhere to go, enters the box, puts up the cross, it's off of the keeper and barely kept in bounds. Curtis Richens is going to get to the ball first, feeds it to Caden Wiley, tries to find room for Lichty to work with, but it goes over the end line, and it'll be a goal kick. Yeah, you rewind to that Lacaz interception. First, a great touch. You notice that first touch, exactly how he wants it to be. Fools the defender, and usually fool me once, you know, shame on me, but you're not going to fool me twice. He does it back-to-back -back times. Then the cross gets a piece of the defender, but still a fantastic set of events for York. Evanston really setting up some good situations. They just got to capitalize on it. Kind of like what we saw a little bit. I mean, sometimes you can set up all the situations in the world, but if a keeper is having a night, there's nothing you can do about it. Here comes another opportunity for Rock Springs, but Rylan Worley denies it. Kicks it deep downfield into the offensive third. Good take, uh, touch there for Caden Wiley. But Rock Springs is going to take it back with Carson Curtis. Flag is down. Races on. Oh, no. Open net and a shot. And a goal. Is taken by Jeff Hyatt, and it's 2 nothing. Rylan Worley rushes out, tries to meet the shooter, but he just mistimes it, leaves the net open, and it's an easy goal for Jeff uh, Hyatt. Yeah, that's one of those 50-50 balls. I mean, if you're going to get out of your box, you've got to win that race. It's it's a tough, it's an angles game, it's a split second, a, not an easy decision for any goaltender. But the alternative was it would have been a, a tough stop, stop either way for Worley on a 1-0 -on breakaway. But tough break for the goaltender, but we see that aggressive play out of him. It works so well and so often, but every now and then it, it'll, it'll bite you. 2-0 Tigers. With 25-58 remaining in the first half. After, so we've got goals from Sosa and Hyatt. And both goals coming just on good through balls from Rock Springs. And that's something that Coach Richens will definitely talk about at the half. We've got to tighten up and strengthen our back four because this is too tough for Worley. I mean, that's not really fair to him to be facing these one-on-0 -oh possessions. Ramon Rivera runs into a wall and still manages to keep the ball for him as York Lacaz will force Rock Springs out of bounds. Good move there by the exchange student. Whistle blown. You got an injured player on the turf? Not sure what's going on there. Maybe a ball crept down, but regardless, almost midway through the first half, and the Red Devils really got to find some spark on offense. Ulysses Sains goes to Richens, but taken away by Hernandez. Rivera for Evanston, nice through the legs ball, but again, taking it away is Hernandez, and Evanston trying to make something happen here. Good oh, through like ball. That. Nice cross to Sains. He's into the box. We'll see what the Tigers do. A shot on goal from the, last, uh, from the left side. Stopped at the far post by the sophomore keeper. Low goal kick. Caden Wiley is all over it. Through ball, looking for Micah Lichty, but Wiley, or sorry, excuse me, uh, Conrad 
all over that one as well as the sophomore keeper will boot it away out of bounds and it's a possession right back to Evanston. So Evanston trying to create something here as they trail by two midway through the first half. 24-11 remaining in the first half. Girls will be on right after this game at 5 o'clock is the scheduled start, uh, start time. And another through ball. Rock Springs with another chance, but I tell you what, Cooper Morrow turns on the Jets and catches up with them. Great hustle by the defenseman. Yeah, Morrow coming off the bench, and what a play to make right there to prevent goal number three potentially, and they turn defense into offense now. Richens looking Robo, up. There. Rivera tries to save it from going over the side, but that was the right idea just a little bit too far ahead of Ramon Rivera. And sometimes the best way to build some offensive momentum is get a stop on defense, and Morrow provided his side that. Let's see what Evanston can do in the following minutes. York Lacaz with another good stop there as Evanston trying to chip into this two-goal lead. You mentioned it. In the game against Natrona County. A Flags two, up. Yep, that's going offside, which, quite frankly, I've seen more often than not. They have kind of take a little bit of a step. Sometimes it gets called, sometimes it doesn't. But anyway, you talked about um, the two-goal lead in that game against Natrona County. It's the most dangerous lead because you think, okay, we're right, we got them right where they want them, but all of a sudden, one goal later, and uh, it's a brand-new ball game. Yep, it's a one-goal game. Now the Red Devils trying to look for their first comeback of the season. They have not fared well when trailing, whether it was to uh, Kelly Walsh. That's the only loss of the season. And then the draw against Natrona, they were ahead. That's the only time they trailed was against Kelly Walsh as it'll be Rock Springs ball. So Evanston looking for their first win, win down. Against Green River, they didn't trail once. They were tied, but didn't trail once. And then against Kelly Walsh, of course, they trailed, and they weren't able to pull that one off. But Kelly Walsh is probably a team that uh, is going to be looking to contend for a state title. So anytime you play those guys, you've got to play your best game in order to have a chance. As Evanston has a real chance this time, but can't be chased down by Tanner Newsom. Look at Newsom making chances on both sides of the pitch right now. First on his defensive end, that time just one touch away from corralling it and giving a good cross into the middle. Goal kick coming for Rock Springs. It'll be taken by Dean Whitman, who wears the captain band. But Evanston with a good chance here as Richens Pat tries to pass to Lichty, but it's taken away by Whitman. Rock Springs with it. Sosa with one goal already, and offsides is Rock Springs. Yeah, I mean, this is trying to tally up now for the Tigers. Once or twice, okay, but all these offsides in the first half, and they can get away with it. They're up 2 0. So it, it's working for them in, in terms of the through ball, but that's something that they're going to want to tidy up, Coach Klein, as the season goes along. You just got to time those runs up better. 2 0 on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. Elon Alth and Matthew Peterson bringing the action live from Tiger Stadium. I want to thank you so much for joining us. We're going to take a break in a minute, but first let's see what happens here with this kick by Cooper Morrow. Nice through ball. Deflected up by Rock Springs. And Ramon Rivera, he's got a chance here. Tries to get the cross off, but is it going to be a corner? No. It's over the end line. We'll be right back with more first half coverage after this on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer on MyLocalRadio.com. The best place to stay when you're in Casper, Wyoming is the Come On In Hotel and Suites. This beautiful log hotel offers five hot tubs, one pool, a fitness center, and fabulous indoor atrium. Offering jacuzzi and fireplace suites, the guest rooms are comfortable and relaxing. Plus, every stay includes a delicious extended continental breakfast. Whenever you're in Casper, stay at the best place. Come on in, hotel and suites. Come on in today. Come on in, hotel and suites, Casper.
America keeps moving and Auto Farm Chevrolet is here to help you keep rolling. Whether you need a brand new vehicle or service on one you already own, Auto Farm Chevrolet is here to lend a helping hand. Our certified mechanics are knowledgeable and our sales team takes the time to get to know you and what your needs are. Stop in today, Auto Farm Chevrolet, 624 Front Street, Evanston. Evanston's community-driven dealer. Peyton Cornia with the free kick as we return back to live action. Evanston still trails 2-0 on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. This broadcast also brought to you in part by Paige Beverly and Billy Tannenbaum. Go Red Devils from the biggest Evanston fans in the state of California. Still on the attacking third as York Lacaz. Nice no-look pass. Caden Wiley cross looking for Richens but kicked away by Rock Springs. This is a real chance as... It's taken away, though, by Hudson Conrad, the sophomore keeper, looking pretty decisive. Yeah, he is commanding that goal box right now. That six-yard line is his line. Evanston, and they're going to give up a free kick. So the Tigers will immediately get to work, trying to set up one of their top players, Jose so Josh Sosa, who's got... One goal already. Evanston's defense collapses in on him as he dishes back out to Mendoza. Looking for the through ball and a Flags chance up. for Hyatt, but, yep, that's going to be offside. And now it's getting to the point where the Tiger players are getting very frustrated, and they're starting to maybe think, hey, we're not offsides. And that's a battle you're not going to win with the officials very often. Looks like the Boo Birds for Rock Springs not very friendly with that call either as the Tigers with a two-goal lead, but uh, their defense has or offense has stalled out a little bit, and you feel like sh little by little, Evanston might be trying to capture some momentum back. York Lacaz with the throw in, finds Lichty, tries to calm it down, but headed away. And bopped up high. Lichty trying to win that 50-50 ball, and he'll do that. Setting up Curtis Richens for a chance. Newsom on the left side, and it is blocked. What's the call? Is it going to be a corner kick or a goal kick? I think they're going to say last touch was Hudson. Now they're no, setting up for the goal kick. Setting up for the goal kick. Interesting. As Tanner Newsom for the second time in this half crashes the side, really trying to present a chance for Evanston. 50-50 ball, first touch is Dom Mendez, and it's out of bounds. The last touch over the side, though, is Evanston. So Rock Springs with a throw in. Nice takeaway for the Red Devils, who's trying to keep control here. Lichty with a real chance. Richens. Back to Lichty. Winds up for a big kick, but it's taken right into the body of a Rock Springs defender. Kind of taking a little bit of a breath was Carson Curtis as that hit him square in the stomach. Lacaz. Wiley. And Ooh. that's a handball. Kicked right into the hand of Mario Mendoza. And Caden Wiley with a free kick. This will be the first direct one that we've seen. So big chance here for the Red Devils. 15-41 remaining in the first half. Wiley, header over to Richens, but it oh. is just off the mark. Curtis Richens with a big chance there. But again, if you are Coach, uh, Coach Brian Richens, you're liking that you're setting, giving yourself chance after chance after shutting down chances on the other side. No doubt. And that all stems from Caden Wiley, a beautiful free kick. I mean, he put that right on the money. Now you're at the point, still in the first half, but trailing 2 0. You've got to start capitalizing on great looks like that. And I'm, I'm, we're not keeping track of possession or who's winning 50-50 balls, but you got to think that Evanston is starting to pick up some momentum with challenging and winning a lot of these 50-50 balls right now. Richens thought he had, looked like he was going to have a shot at it, but instead it's a deep kick 
And Cornea kicks it to the outside to Mendez. Back to Peyton. Wiley. Trying to look for the through ball for Richens. Taken away by Rock Springs, but now another big chance. Caden Wiley off and running. Puts up a shot on goal, but easily fielded by Hudson Conrad. Yeah, not quite sure what Wiley was looking at there. I think he thought he was a little closer. Once he picked his head up, he realized he may have wanted to look to his left or right. He had Lichty on his right side, but at this point in the game, you can't hurt to try and put some shots on net and test Hudson. Up to four shots on goal, but... All for one, all besides one, was pretty well fielded by Hudson. Only two shots on goal for Rock Springs, and they're the two that went through. As Evanston has outshot them four to two. So like what we talked about on Devil Yell early this morning, I said with Hudson having the most saves in the state, and it's not even close, it's 20, 40 for him, 24 for the second highest, which happens to be Ryland Worley. Makes you wonder if that back line might be something you can expose a little bit. And Evanston, uh, indeed, I think, is finding something here as Richens, good through ball. It's going to be up to Michael Lichty to try to win the race, but it's taken away by Hudson Conrad. Impressed with the sophomore keeper as his goal kick is low. Popped up high into the midfield. 13-14 remaining in the first half. Good moves here by Braden Davies out of Rock Springs. Distributes to Duarte. 13 minutes remaining in the first half. Nice job there by Evanston's Dom Mendez to kind of escort that one out. Quick throw in though, and now here comes another chance for Rock Springs, but Yorick Lacaz gets there and takes away what would have been a for sure shot on goal. Yeah, Davies with the right idea, just no one's home, except for Lacaz who makes the smart play, clears it from danger. 12.34 remaining in the first half. Inbound, or a throw in for Rock Springs, but they're gonna have to go all the way out to the midfield thanks to the tough defense by Evanston. Whistle blown. Looks like a shoe fell off. So we'll go ahead and stop and restart with 12.08 and counting. 2-0, Rock Springs lead. They scored in the 35th minute and the 25th minute. So right now, Evanston has held them scoreless for a while, except this could be trouble. A through ball cut off by Ramon Rivera. He shoved down. He gets it back, tries to feed it to the outside, but instead Hyatt taken away by Rivera. Chase down and contact made with Hernandez. Nice. Uh, that's, oh, just for a second, yeah. you thought, are these officials really going to let him play this physical? And that was a big chest bump. Yeah, and I think uh, Ulysses Sains knew it, too. He went over there and fist bumped the referee as soon as it happened. Ramon Rivera just kind of gave a side hug to Josh Sosa, and he kind of shoved him out of the way. Yeah, Sosa, not the biggest player on the pitch right now. And I think he just got uh – -oh. is he getting a yellow card or just a warning? There's a conversation happening between Sains and Sosa right now. And the um, – the, uh, sorry, referee – I think warnings are just being issued right now. As this is a rivalry game, Evanston and Rock Springs are te two t uh, schools that are fairly close to each other. When you look at Wyoming, Evanston and Rock Springs see each other quite often in sports. So this is something where these players probably played against each other ever since AYSO. Two nil the score and a good move here by Ryland Worley. That was almost another chance for Rock Springs. Brayden Davies barreling down. Worley makes the, the uh, dive to take away the goal. Inbound pass by Rock Springs goes over the end line and sets up a goal kick. Yeah, what a fantastic stop by Worley. Gets his shoulder on the pitch to eliminate any kind of air getting underneath him, including a ball and... Great stop by Worley, much needed one. I mean, this is a completely different game if it's 3-0 at the half versus 2-0. I 
I think uh, Rock Springs thought, hey, we got two on him easily drawing him out. Let's see if we can do it again. And um, I, they're finding out that Ryland Worley, that's his bread and butter, coming out and challenging shots. Now, good luck, but just too far for Richens to chase after. Little under 10 minutes to go in the opening half. Throw in by Rock Springs. Back out to Sosa. Flags up. Through ball, yep, that is an offside for Junior Benedes. I think I'll take save. Let's check out what the Red Devils can do to close out the first half. Even if it doesn't result in a goal, get some better looks. And I'd like to see them attack the wings a little more. Watch this offense. They're really trying to go down the middle. Through ball to Ren Ricardo Renova, who gets involved for the first time today. We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll have the conclusion of the first half on our First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer on MyLocalRadio.com. What do you do when you lose a tooth? Mm -hmm. Put it under your pillow. <laughs> under my pillow. Or I'm like a treasure chest so you could put it in. Why do you do that? Because then the tooth fairy, tooth, feather, tooth fairy comes. For the tooth fairy. So the tooth fairy can come get them. And then what happens? I get money. We may not be the tooth fairy, but we can still take care of your teeth. Bear River Dental in Evanston. The big difference that sets Freeway Tire apart from other tire stores is the fact that we care. We care about the customer service we provide. We care about selling quality products at fair prices. And we care about your vehicle. So when you're looking for tires or having work done on your vehicle, everything from maintenance to major repairs, make sure you take it to the company that really cares, Freeway Tire, on Bear River Drive in Evanston. Stop in today or schedule an appointment with us online at freewaytires.com. Welcome back to Tiger Stadium. We got the conclusion of the first half for you as it's 2-0 Rock Springs on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. Sosa trying to get make something happen, and he shoves Mendez. Man, this is getting physical here. Yeah, I think Sosa was just a, stemming from that frustration earlier when he was bumped, and then there was seemed to be an attempt to reconcile, and he wasn't having any apologies. So now he's taking out his anger there a little bit, it appears so, but... A little over seven minutes to go in the first half, and Worley with a strong leg trying to parachute this one to the offensive end. Morrow taken away by Rock Springs. Hyatt. Way off sides. I mean, th this is a good Rock Springs team, make no mistake, but as the season goes along and they get closer to regionals and into the state tournament, the these kind of mistakes really have to be tidied up. It'll be Cooper, or not, sorry, not Cooper Morrow. Who's taking that free kick for Evanston? That is Dom Mendez. That'll do it for the Red Devils. Nice line drive kick right at David Perez. And now Evanston with the chance. Caden Wiley with the shot. Oh, and it goes wide off the near post. Oh. Wiley, that ball was spinning. That's even tougher right there. Such a good opportunity, but... They come up with nothing now, just over six to play in the first half. Five shots on goal for Evanston, four for Rock Springs. Is that on goal? No, that was not. You're right. I was just thinking, I was just looking back at that. Something's going on here. There's some type of stoppage happening. As we're waiting for the goal kick. I think maybe the, the goaltender, Hudson, appears to be Messing around with his mitts. But now they get the kick away. Wiley with a good header. Looking for Renova. As Cooper Morrow goes right back to Johnson. Five and a half to go in the first half. Ricardo Rivera back to Wiley. And now Rock Springs. Sosa goes left side. Hyatt. Yeah, that looked out to me. Good uh, call by the official right there. The side judge. Appeared that the ball entirely crossed the line, and now the Red Devils with a little over five to play, trying to mount some kind of attack. Goal or not, build some momentum and find a bit of identity on offense because going up the middle against this Rock Springs team has not worked well for them. Johnson. 
Contact back to Sosa. Looking for uh -oh. the cross, and that one, a big through ball and a big chance. What a stop. Sosa. What a diving stop for Rylan Worley. Wow, one of the better saves you'll see all year long. Unbelievable. Corner kick coming for Rock Springs and Evanston. Lifted by their keeper. Worley just looked like Superman out there. Able to keep it at a 2-0 lead, but a corner kick looming ahead here. 418 and counting remaining in the first half. That one goes outside the box and a good takeaway for Caden Wiley. He's off and running. He tells the that Renova that a through ball is coming, but it's going to be chased down and escorted across the end line by Rock Springs, number 17. That's Carson Curtis. Elon, a trend we have seen is that a lot of these balls from Evanston have just too much on it, and it makes you wonder, you're playing on turf. Everything's faster. That's the number one rule when you play on artificial turf. So when they're playing on grass back in Evanston, it, it's a little slower, and I think we're seeing the um, results of that. Nice 50-50 ball win for Evanston as they'll keep it on their attacking third. Still trying to calm it down as... Hyatt bops it up high, headed by Derek Johnson, and here Look comes Hyatt speed. with a through ball. He's leading a sea of white. Great job by Cooper Morrow to get there. Shot stopped by Worley, and he does it again. I mean, that's just an absolute rocket. Worley bats it down, and now Hyatt appears to be a little uncomfortable, but you got to give Hyatt credit for the speed and the ability just to blow past the defense, but ran into a tough judge in Worley. Evanston in the attack, but Rock Springs trying to reverse field. There's going to be a foul called on Evanston, so free kick oncoming for Rock Springs from the attacking third of Evanston, and they look to put this one, a nice through ball, taken away by Cooper Morrow, who just... Puts it over the sideline to kill that breakaway. Little under two and a half to go in the first 40. Keeping an eye on this clock. As soon as it, as soon as it hit zero, we'll hear a buzzer, and that'll be it for the first half. Connor Panzer will uh, throw it in for Rock Springs. Floats it up high to... Benedes. Nice job by Caden Wiley yet again. Good through ball. Finds David Perez, and there's contact made. He's still on his feet. Good pass to Wiley. Back to Ricardo Rivera. He's got a cross, and it's kicked over the line by Carson Curtis. Corner kick Evanston in the final two minutes. And it will be Ricardo Rivera or Ramon Rivera, my apologies, to take it. Or Evans said, nope, they're going to retreat him out. And that is Jafet Godina. Yeah, clock's ticking under 90 seconds to play here. Nice through ball, and it is headed out by Rock Springs, but Evanson's still going to calm it down. Kick to the outside. Caden Wiley, he launches a shot. That oh! one off of the top bar. Which bar did that hit? <laughs> it hit? The, I think it hit the bottom of the upright, but that was a good look and the right idea by Caden Wiley. Yeah, Wiley, he knows that he's got some distance between him and the net, but you never want to blast it because th these balls can sail in the cold air. And that time, just too strong with 43 seconds and counting. As the wind begins to crank up here just a little bit in Rock Springs, big surprise here if you know Wyoming. Perez on the far sideline, taken away after Duarte makes the challenge. Hyatt, don't tell him that he's uncomfortable as he just turned on the Jets yet again, but it'll go back to Evanston. 20 seconds to counting. Sinche to Wiley as he will go ahead and try something, but it's off the mark and over the inline. Tell you what, Caden Wiley usually is a defender, but we've seen him get more involved on the offensive side of the field today than I think we've seen all year. As that is the end of the first half. 
So halfway home, it's 2-0 Rock Springs lead. They scored those goals 10 minutes apart, uh, 35 and 25. And ever since then, Evanston, I think they've kind of captured some momentum and really let Rock Springs know that those two goals were little mistakes that wouldn't happen again. Yeah, we'll break this one down after the first half in our halftime coverage and get you set for the second half up in about nine and a half minutes. We'll be right back on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer on MyLocalRadio.com. The best live coverage of local sports, weather, local news, and radio classifieds. Plus job listings, fun giveaways, and more. It's all on MyLocalRadio.com. Watch live as your high school teams clash with their biggest rivals. Listen to the latest from your team's coaches, catch up on local and regional news, and get accurate weather conditions and forecasts. Visit MyLocalRadio.com, like us on Facebook, and stream it all now. For more than 10 years, the professional and friendly staff at Mountain West Business Solutions has been serving customers in Wyoming and Utah. Our professional technicians live and work in communities across both states. This way, we're able to provide quick, quality service to all of our customers. We serve businesses of all sizes, and we also provide service and supplies for HP printers. Call us today to see how we can help with all your printing and copying needs. Mountain West Business Solutions, a local company with a toll-free number, 866-583-9925. There's a reason Rocky Mountain Yeti is Southwest Wyoming's number one dealer. Come in and see what all the buzz is about. Voted Best of Evanston by you. Best of Evanston in new car sales, used car sales, and Best of Evanston in service. We have the best selection of inventory in town. Paired with our legendary 20-year, 200,000-mile warranty, come see us today at one of our two locations, 100 Wasatch Road or Yeti on 3rd next to Walmart. Let us help get you on your next adventure today. Rocky Mountain Yeti, legend-driven. Welcome back to Tiger Stadium. The score 2-0 at the half. Elon Off and Matthew Peterson bringing the action live from Rock Springs. About an hour and a half drive away from Evanston. But uh, it sounds like a long way to go. But when you consider that they went two and a half hours on Friday to Pinedale and five hours to Casper, uh, this is just a walk in the park. Yeah, this is our backyard right here, <laughs> right? With sister, uh, sister cities. But a first half to remember here for the Tigers of Rock Springs, 2-0 lead over Evanston. And, I mean, you, you can chop it up in two ways. One, let's talk about Rock Springs here. Uh, yep. Very, very fast. I mean, that, that's, very. That, that jumps out to you. Watch the speed of these through balls. They are winning those long balls right now. If it wasn't for, like, 10 offsides flags, this, this uh, score may be a little bigger. But then for the Evanston side, if they want to get back in this one, the middle is not open. It, it is closed. And that's what they've been trying to do offensively. I'd like to see them try and spread the field out. It's a long field. It, it's bigger than a football field. It's yeah. closer in, in terms of width, about 65 yards. So capitalize on that. Absolutely. And the one thing that stands out to me about Rock Springs is absolutely the speed. Uh, Jeff Hyatt, he had a through ball that was on sides. He actually ran through the Red Devil defensive line, almost like parting the Red Sea. Maybe we'll call it that if he pulls that off in Evanston when Evanston's in their red uniforms. <laughs> uh, but for Evanston, what I'm noticing is they give up those two early goals, and I think I'm not, I'm not an expert, but I think that they now are kind of slowly starting to establish control, especially in the center. Uh, in the midfield as well as trying to get things to happen on their side. Uh, they're out shooting Rock Springs, uh, I believe it's 5-4. to four. But uh, right now, Evanston has had more good looks since those two goals were given up than Rock Springs. Uh, Rylan Worley, though, he's been fantastic. Yeah, had a Superman dive and a save, had some nice stops, got burned on some of those long through balls yeah. where it's kind of a coin toss. Should you sit back and wait for it to come to you or try to meet him in the middle? And that's a tough foot race to, in a split second, and, estimate. And if you remember that second goal, he did get there in time. He They just kicked it over him. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they just kind of kicked it around him and over him, and that left an open goal. Evanston's defense couldn't get back to try to defend it. And that gave us that 2-0 lead goal scored by Sosa and Hyatt. Those two have definitely jumped out on the page for Evanston. Uh, really impressive game so far by Caden Wiley. 
Yeah, Caden Wiley having a very strong start. You go back to that free kick he had in the first half, put it right on the money. And then as for the Rock Springs crew, it, it's become abundantly clear they're not a possess possession offense. They want to get across midfield, and then they have – it's almost like football. You've got three different players running to the end zone. Who are you yeah. going to throw it to? And, and it works one out of ten times, you hope. And uh, that's probably what's kind of causing a little bit of offsides. We'll talk more about that in a minute. We're about four and a half minutes away from the start of the second half. We'll be right back with more of our halftime coverage after this on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer on MyLocalRadio.com. Time flies, especially when you're having fun. This is Jeremy Rex, manager at TBRS in Evanston. It's hard to believe that we've been here almost a year with our new management team and staff. Did you know that you can have your vehicle detailed, your windshield replaced, ship repair done, or get your trailer refinished or rewired at TBRS? Of course, we are a full-service collision repair shop, too. You can even change your oil and your brakes. Visit TBRS today. Let T-Bar fix your car. 515 County Road, Evanston. Whatever takes you to Evanston, whether it's high school sports, a teaching conference, music festivals, speech and debate, or your job, always book your hotel reservations at the Best Western Dunmar Inn. With 165 ground level rooms on 10 acres, the Best Western offers everything you need, including newly renovated rooms, a business office, workout room, outdoor pool, and full service restaurant, plus complimentary breakfast with every stay. Whenever you're in Evanston, make your hotel reservations with your friends at the Best Western Dunmar Inn. This First Bank of Wyoming broadcast of Evanston Basketball is brought to you in part by Hoover Chiropractic. Dr. Todd Hoover does all the chiropractic work you need, as well as blood work, dietary supplements, a weight loss program, x-rays, and he can help you get rid of migraines and allergies. Call Hoover Chiropractic at 307-789-0043. Two minutes and 40 seconds separate us from the beginning of the second half. Matthew, uh, you're going to have to go run camera, I believe, yep, here in the second half. Uh, before you go, some parting uh, thoughts before we see you at the postgame. Yeah, let's talk about what the Red Devils need to do to overcome this deficit at the half. One, I like what they're doing a little bit after those two goals with the back line. Watch the Evanston back four push up and they're going to make this offsides they're going to almost like strangle hold and only give um rock springs a little bit of room to try and tie their offensive runs on the offensive end i'd like to see them use the width a little bit more clearly the center of the field is just not working on the offensive third so use those wings and try and cross it in there and what you're going to do is you're going to spread and almost like a rubber band stretch that defense out all right, that's Matthew Peterson. He's going to run camera for us. We'll have him back for the post-game show. Don't you worry about that. When we come back, we will have the start of the second half on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer on MyLocalRadio.com. When do you schedule doctor appointments? In bed before I fall asleep. In the car waiting to pick up my kids. We can even do it after breakfast. We all lead busy lives. Online appointment scheduling puts you in control. In just 90 seconds, you can make an appointment with a primary care provider or specialist at evanstonanytime.com. Select the day and time most convenient for you. Enter some basic information, and just like that, you're scheduled for care. Schedule appointments for next day and beyond at evanstonanytime.com. When your vehicle needs new tires, any tire store can get you back on the road. But only Plains Tire can get you rolling again with the peace of mind that you were treated well, paid a fair price, and that you'll be taken care of for the life of the tire. At Plains Tire, trained tire technicians mount and expertly balance your new tires, replace the valve stems, and hand check each lug nut to make sure it's all tight and secure. Plus, you'll get lifetime alignment checks and tire rotations only at Plains Tire, 157 Bear River Drive, Evanston. Visit PlainsTire.com. 
May of 2019, Uinta County School District Number One became the first school district in Wyoming to achieve a certified level one on high reliability schools by the Rosanna Leadership Center. We're focusing on three levels. Level one is a safe and collaborative culture. Level two, effective teaching in every classroom. And level three is a guaranteed and viable curriculum. We are certified level one in safe and collaborative culture. This is Superintendent Ryan Thomas. Congratulations to everyone in our district. Keep up the great work. Uinta County School District Number One. Pathway to Excellence. Welcome back to Tiger Stadium. Second half action getting started. Elon Off bringing you it live from Tiger Stadium in Rock Springs, Wyoming. I'm going to go ahead and uh, fix our, ca our camera here on the scoreboard. 40 minutes will go on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. As Evanston trails Rock Springs two to nil here as we start the second half. Evanston will now move left to right as the Red Devils trying to get something started here. Trailing two nothing. Nice calm down there by Ramon or uh, Dante Sinche. But now Rock Springs stretching it to that near wing. Carson Curtis out of bounds. Last touch was. Rock Springs, throw in for Jafet Godina. Sinche with the touch, but now Rock Springs calms it down. Duarte, nice take there by Ulysses Sainz. Kicked into the defensive third, and it will be cleared over the line by Cornia. Sosa. Richens with a touch and now kicks it to the left side for Hernandez, but Ramon Rivera will watch it go over the sideline. Last touch was Rock Springs. 38-42 and counting. In the second half, Evanston trails 2-0. The Tigers in the all black with the white numerals. Evanston in the all white with the red numerals. Good touch by Curtis Richens, putting it over the mid court, the court, the line. And now Evanston with a real chance. Omar Burgos on that far wing, but it's cut off, taken away by Curtis. Evanston, good pass, looking for Lichty, but it's just off target. Taken away by Sosa. And now coming out to challenge it is Rylan Worley as he'll boot that one high into the Wyoming sky. And Logan Garfius will be on defense. Garfius trying a through ball, looking for Ramon Rivera. But taken away by Rock Springs. Rivera, though, is going to battle in that corner. Keeps it in bounds. And a real chance for the Red Devils is going to go over the sideline, so Evanston with the throw in on the attacking third. No, they're saying it's Rock Springs. Check that. And the Tigers. We'll start with the ball, but Evanston attacking in the midfield, winning the 50-50 chances. Sinche had the touch. Instead, it's kicked away by Sosa. Stolen by Godina. Cross looking for Lichty. It's through him. Here's a real chance, but coming is Hudson Conrad, who's able to snag it away. Richens. Taken away by the Tigers. Six or 36 41 remaining in the first half. Evanston tra trapping them in that. Defensive third for Rock Springs. Through ball denied by Peyton Cornia. Throw in for the Tigers. Duarte throws it at the feet of Mendoza and put over the sideline by Garfius. Throw downfield. 
50-50 ball won by Evanston. Garfius taken away, though, by Mendoza. Setting up Hyatt on the far wing. Real chance for the Tigers. Kicked over the sideline by Derek Johnson. Throw in coming for Rock Springs. Mendoza will actually hand the ball off to his teammate Panzer. And Evanston able to get the boot on it. Lichty at the center logo. Through ball looking for Rivera. He finds it. Nice ball through the legs, taken away by Garfius. Rivera still looking for a chance for Evanston. The shot on goal deflected high by Hudson. What a stop by Hudson Conrad. Evanston with a good look for it looked like Ulysses Sains and the Red Devils starting their attack. Davies. Picked up high by Cornea. Drops at the 20, and it's headed over the end line. Last touch, Rock Spring. So Evanston still on there, attacking third. Throwing it in for the Red Devils is Omar Burgos. On the far wing, Hyatt takes it away from Evanston, but cut off by Derek Johnson on the long ball. Cornea. Johnson, Burgos, through ball to Sinche. Burgos with the long strike, and it is off of, on the hands of Hudson Conrad. He'll kick it high, and Evanston with two shots on goal here in the second half. As now there's a problem there as Worley just kind of calmed it down, but then kicks it out of bounds, so... The Red Devils on defense in the dangerous third for them. Sinche goes Richens. Duarte with the takeaway. Real chance here for Duarte as he will go to the right side to Sosa for the cross and snagged out of the sky by Worley. There's contact made by Rock Springs, but no whistle. Worley, definite contact made there, but it was not hard. It was all incidental, so it will be a play on type situation. Lichty with the ball, passes right side to Sinche and headed away by Rock Springs. As a whistle is blown, looks like a shoe came off of a Rock Springs player. Has Mendoza. He's down there trying to make sure his shoe is properly secured. And some other players take advantage to double check on their equipment as well. 32-47 left in the second half. 2-0 on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. It all came in the first half. At 35 minutes left in the first half, Soso with the shot. And Hyatt, 10 minutes later at 25, and that's how we get to 2-0 on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. Rock Springs leading. So they stop the clock at 32-44 for the equipment check as the free kick from Rock Springs is now controlled by Rock Springs after a short time in Evanston control. Mendoza kicks left side to Hernandez. Panzer over the sideline. It's going to go to Evanston. Omar Burgos with the throw in for the Red Devils. 32-17 and counting. Goes to Ramon Rivera. Along the wing, tries to get past the defender, but it's not going to happen. Evanston still with control of the ball. Tries to put a through ball for Micah Lichty, and it is kicked over the sideline by Curtis. Lichty in the corner. Cross into the ear. Here comes the chance for Burgos. Taken away. They want a handball. They're not going to get it. 
And it's over the end line. I think it's a corner kick. I think they just called a handball. No, it's a yellow card on Evanston. And coming and getting it is Ramon Rivera. So they're not even going to call a corner kick. It's a goal kick, according to the referee. No, it will go to the corner. Okay, so Evanston will have a chance. Thought the referee awarded a handball as he pointed to his hand, but instead he called an Evanston player over and showed him a car, and that was Ricardo, or Ramon Rivera, excuse me, who received the discipline. So Evanston with the corner kick, trying to cut into this 2-0 lead. It'll be Jafet Godina to kick it for the Red Devils. 30-36 remaining in the first he or second half of the first game of our doubleheader. Kick is in there, and this one's setting up a real chance, and it's taken away by Rock Springs. They clear it out. Sosa along the wing with a nice move around Richens. He's still with it, crosses it up, looking for Hyatt. He's going to calm it down, puts the shot, and blows it through the uprights. Uh, goal kick coming Evanston's way after a well-struck corner kick by Godina that they can't take control of. Worley. The line drive kick at Garfius. Goes right side to Burgos. Back out to Johnson, who sends the through ball. Kicked away by Benedes, but Evanston's still with control. Burgos sends it through. Benedes, back to Burgos. Those two are going to play ping pong for a while. Under 30 minutes to go. Garfius in the midfield. Taken away by Sosa. Kicked forward by Cornea. Finds Sinche. Good pass. Trying to find Saints. He fights through. And this one will go into the end line. And it's a goal kick. Last touch by Evanston. The Red Devils definitely fighting here in this second half and not letting up, even though they are down two to nil. One goal changes the complexion of this game completely. Benedes to do the goal kick for Rock Springs. As there is a whistle on the Tigers. Or excuse me, a whistle, and the Tigers were waiting for it. Line drive kick right at the feet of Richens. Burgos kicks that one over the sideline. Quickly picked up by Panzer as he tries to throw it in quickly, but no, they'll go ahead and tell Benedes to throw it in. Kicked up high by Cornea. Sosa. Taken away by Sinche, but instead they'll go to the outside to Duarte. Curtis, along the near side, through ball, finds Benedes, taken away by Evanston's Peyton Cornea. But now back out to Benedes. He's going to try to find some shot on goal. Diving stop by Ryland Worley. It's the seventh shot on goal for Rock Springs in this game. Evanston's got six. Evanston trying to calm something down. 27-27 remaining in the second half. They trail 2-0. Burgos. Puts it over the sideline. No, Newsom was waiting for it smartly at the sideline. Tanner's going to take off on a run. Looks for something, and it is over the line. Throw in for Rock Springs. 27-03. Remaining in the second half. Evanston with a real chance here. Looking for Lichty, but the, sh the pass was too strong. This one of through ball to Hyatt. He's got a real chance. Crosses over to Sosa. Center of the field. Contact made. Two players go down. It was Godina and Hyatt, or Sosa. 
Cross looking for Rock Springs. Instead, it's denied outside by Evanston. Sosa tries to keep it at bounds. He does exactly that, but it's taken away by Evanston. Dante Cinche hit from behind the back, and yep, that's going to be a foul. Yellow car coming to Sosa. So two yellow cards in the game, one to Josh Sosa, and the other to Ramon Rivera. So one for each team. Free kick coming for the Red Devils. It'll be Jafet Godina to take it for Evanston. Sosa will have to take a bit of a break with 26-18 remaining in the second half. 2-0 on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. Rock Springs leads. Godina with a high kick. Good header by Richin. Sinche setting up a chance for Burgos, cleared out by Whitman. Derek Johnson tries to play defense on Hyatt, but he's going to get through. Kicks to the left side and swept out of bounds by Omar Burgos. The Evanston defense keeping their end of the bargain as they have not allowed a goal since 25 minutes left in the first half. 25-46 and counting left in the second here as they lead 2-0. Chance here for Rock Springs, cross right side, and that one will go and be intercepted by Newsom that goes over the end line. So the cross trying to be set up by Benedez is bopped over the end line by Newsom. And it'll be a far corner kick for Rock Springs. 25-12 remaining in this second half. Still 2-0 on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. This one is right at goal, but Sinche tries to turn it around. Ryland Worley's left the goal. It's wide open. Evanston somehow, someway. Keeps that from being scored. My goodness, Ryland Worley tried to take the ball away on the dribble. They make him miss. The net is open. The Evanston defense collapses in front of the net. Worley gets back there in time to dive to stop the shot on goal. Eight shots on goal for Rock Springs in the game. Hernandez looking for Hyatt on the through ball as it is over the sideline. Chased out of bounds by Burgos. Throw inbound to Montez. Derek Johnson in defense trying to bounce it off of the Rock Springs player and over the sideline. That's exactly what he does. Evanston with the throw in. Burgos goes to Johnson who calms the ball down. Back out to Burgos. But now there's trouble as it's taken away by Brandon Davies. Gets it over to the speedy Hyatt. He kicks back to the outside to Panzer. Cleared up and out of by Sinche. Long kick, and now it's going to be a foot race and kicked over and into the Evanston bench. Wow, that actually went over the Evanston bench and onto the train tracks behind the stadium by the sophomore keeper, Hudson Conrad. Throw in coming for the Red Devils with 23-28 remaining in the second half, and it will be on the attacking third. Garfius setting up something as Evanston still has it. But kicked through by Rock Springs. The speed by Hyatt versus Peyton Cornea. Taken away by Hyatt. The shot is stopped. What a play by Ryland Worley. Goes to the ground and takes it in the chest and gathers it up. Ryland Worley with another save. Nine shots on goal by Rock Springs. Evanston's defense has kept their end of the bargain. They need the offense to come through. 22-39 remaining in the second half, and it's a 2-0 lead for the Tigers. Evanston's goal differential right now against opponents is plus two after the 5-0 win over the Pinedale Wranglers. 
And Hyatt is down on the pitch. That's bad news for the Rock Springs faithful as he has been an absolute spark plug for the Tigers. Might be a bit of a cramp type situation as they are stretching him out. Derek Johnson was actually helping him do that. Checking in on the MyLocalRadio.com chat room. Want to say hi to Paige Tannenbaum, as well as Armin and Gwen Lacaz. User, username Harry Potter and Ben the Biggest. Thank you so much for joining us in the MyLocalRadio.com chat room. 2157 remaining in the second half. Oh, of course, the great Donna Bruce dr dropping us our first message of the day. 2 nothing Tigers on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. 2-0, apologies. As Evanston will get a free kick to restart it. It's going to be Omar Burgos to take it for the Red Devils. As the referee will go ahead and bounce it to Burgos. He kicks it high. Garfius tries to get there first, but Rock Springs defense makes first contact. 22-43, hard contact between Burgos and Brandon Davies on the header attempt. It's going to go back to Evanston and Davies on the pitch right now. It looks like his shoe might have come off, and that's what he was fixing. It looked like it was hard contact on the header attempt, but uh, both him and Burgos, as it will be a free kick for Evanston. They're both on their feet. 22-13 on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. Burgos floats this one high, and it is calm down. Bicycle kick attempt by David Perez. So he gets his first shot of the day. Tried to lay out and put that one on goal, but it is off of, uh, well off the near post. But it's the right idea. Coach Richens has got to like the fact that his team is just create, is creating chances. They just have not been able to cash in on those chances. A through ball. Here comes a big chance for Davies. But Derek Johnson wins the foot race and puts it over the line to stop the breakaway shots. 21-28 remaining in this second half. 2-0 on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. Our broadcast also brought to you in part by ba Billy Beige and Beverly Tannenbaum. Go Red Devils from the biggest... Evanston fans in the state of California. Corner kick coming for Rock Springs, and that one is too long, too strong. Over the end, throw in for Evanston. We'll be right back after this on a first Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer on MyLocalRadio.com. The best cement comes from Ellingford Brothers in Evanston. They've been mixing cement for every type of job for generations. Major construction, road and bridge, cement blocks, foundations, sidewalks, curb and gutter, cement steps, septic tanks and water troughs. No job is too large or too small. Make sure you get the best quality cement available at the best prices. Always get your cement from Ellingford Brothers. Call today. Ellingford Brothers. We know cement. 307-789-1515. Jonah Valley Federal Credit Union is a not-for-profit financial institution. When you become a member, you are an owner of the credit union. We believe in people over profit, and that impacts the way we do business from our overall structure down to the smallest detail. Our philosophy sets us apart, and we're here for you. Earn more with our high-yield checking account, start a savings goal, check out our competitive loans, and much more. Become a member today. We're a caring partner dedicated to your financial success. Member NCUA. Evanston with the real chance, shoots and a great stop by Conrad and kicked over the sideline. Shot was taken by Ricardo Renova and the Red Devils with a real chance out of the break. Richens passes right side to Newsom. Night, under 20 minutes to go in the half. Garfius with a chance to cross it up and it is over the line. It'll go back to Rock Springs. 2-0 on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. Despite the great save there by uh, uh, Conrad. 
Three shots on goal in the third half, uh, second half for the Red Devils. Three for Rock Springs. Evanston still on the attacking third with a real shot here. I say that a lot. I got to figure out a way to mix that one up. As it bounces at the 30-yard line. Kicked into the face of Richens and taken right back by Mendoza. Through ball to Montez. Back out to Hyatt. Mendoza. Newsom comes from behind to try to play defense. Far wing. Mendoza again, but Evanston's defense has done great. Cleared out by the Red Devils. Running up to make that play was Curtis Richens as he put it over the, the center line. 18-21 remaining in the, the second half. 2-0 on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. Rock Springs leads it. Evanston's de uh, defense has done a great job for three quarters of this game. Can they keep it up and keep it a two-goal game and give themselves a chance? The offense has definitely cranked up a little bit. Great through ball and a chance for Ricardo Renova. And it is, it is on the sideline. It's not over yet. And the defense of Rock Springs is able to flip the field. Cornea with a good ch uh, pass, despite the challenge from Sosa. Through ball, kicked up and over the defense for, of Rock Springs. But the Tigers are able to take it back. Here comes a chance here for Davies. No flag up. He's on side. Beautiful stop by Ryland Worley. Tenth shot on goal in the game for Rock Springs. 17.08 left in the game. Sosa and Johnson collide, and there's a whistle. It's going back to Evanston. Foul will be called on Rock Springs, so a free kick coming. And that was Josh Sosa, the sophomore. He's got to be careful. He's only already got one yellow card in there as... Josh Sosa and Derek Johnson were on the ground scuffling for the ball a little bit and the judge that it was Sosa who was the offender here. Through ball trying to set up David Perez but it is going to go over the sideline. Last touch was Evanston. As we'll have a substitution come on. York Lacaz checking on for Omar Burgos. Evanston with the throw in on their third of the field. Under 20 minutes to go in the second half. Jafet Godina throws to David Perez and it's headed out of bounds by Rock Springs. Another quick throw in. This time it's going to be Renner Nova setting up Perez and kicked over the sideline again. So right now Rock Springs defense knows that Evanston is going to try to look for a chance and create something. Renova. In the corner. Nice moves there. Trying to drive into the box, and it is going to be kept in bounds, but it is off of the foot of Jafet Godina. It'll be a throw in for Rock Springs. 15 and a half left in the game. 2 0 Tigers. Derek Johnson turns on the Jets, but he loses it. Sosa with a chance on goal. He puts the shot right into the chest of Ryland Worley, who makes another brilliant save. Evanston with a real chance here, looking for David Perez. He's closing down on speed with a real chance in the near side of the box. Taken away by Deegan Whitman. Rock Springs now going to take their time to set up Mendoza. We gotta get a break in. We'll be right back after this with more of the second half on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation. Hold on, Hyatt tries to go on goal, makes a move, makes another move, setting up one, and it goes, the shot goes high from Mendoza. We'll be right back after this on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer on MyLocalRadio.com. Signage is a critical part of your business. It helps customers find your front door. Rocky Mountain Sign will provide you with expertly designed signs, LEDs, channel letters, as well as skillfully cut signage using wood, 
metal, plastic, and other mediums to help your customers find you with high quality signage. Using the best technology, designs, and installation by Rocky Mountain Sign. Your signage says a lot about your business. Work with the professionals at Rocky Mountain Sign, 243 7th Street in Evanston, Wyoming. The best place to stay when you're in Casper, Wyoming is the Come On In Hotel and Suites. This beautiful log hotel offers five hot tubs, one pool, a fitness center, and fabulous indoor atrium. Offering jacuzzi and fireplace suites, the guest rooms are comfortable and relaxing. Plus, every stay includes a delicious extended continental breakfast. Whenever you're in Casper, stay at the best place. Come on in Hotel and Suites. Come on in today. Come on in Hotel and Suites, Casper. Evanston with a throw in on their attacking third of the field. Throw in finds Caden Wiley. And now into the end zone and cleared out by Rock Springs. Throw in to Lacaze. 13.03 left in the second half. Lacaze with a good pass, looking for an attacker. Almost finds it in Ricardo Renova. Instead, it'll stay on that third. David Perez, dead center, a shot, deflected up, trying to calm it down. But Evanston is not able to turn that opportunity. Lacaze with a nice pass, looking for Newsom on the far sideline, but it is over, and a throw in coming to Rock Springs. 12 and a half remaining here in the second half. As the Tigers get the throw in, Mendoza goes Hernandez. Whitman kicks it over the sideline. 12.09 remaining in the second half. 2 0 on the impact physical therapy scoreboard. Tigers lead. Sosa to Hyatt on sides, but Johnson with the challenge, and it's over the sideline. Newsom with the throw in. And I think Evanston tried to rush it to take it from him, but the referee said, no, no, it's Rock Springs ball, not Evanston's. And that looked like the right call over here. Panzer throws into Whitman. Pass down to Sosa. Taken away by Dom Mendez. However, here comes another chance for Rock Springs. Davies tries to charge on goal, but Ryland Worley comes out and slides the ball over the sideline. 2-0 on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. 11-10 and counting left in this second half. Those two goals came in the first half. Sosa at 35, Hyatt at 25. Throw in to Sosa, kicks it high, headed by Hyatt. Johnson chases it to the far corner. Escorts it out for the goal kick. 10.44 remaining in the second half. Ryland Worley, a senior keeper for the Red Devils to kick it away for Evanston. Line drive right at Dom Mendez, Cornea. And now taken away by Sosa. Good defense by Mendez and Caden Wiley puts it over the sideline. Throw in coming from Duarte. Headed over the sideline by Elise Sains. As it'll be another throw in, setting up Davies. Newsom with the kick. Mario Mendoza. Comes to the outside to Carson Curtis. Taken away by Evans. A great pass by Sains. It's going to be a foot race between Curtis and an Evanston player. Curtis gets there, calling for the ball quickly as Mendoza as he sees that time is of the essence. Richens goes to the outside of Mendoza, crossing it up and calmed down for Evanston. Sains to Rivera. Cross, and that one is almost headed in. Oh, what a good look 
by David Perez as he gets the header. But Conrad is able to take it away. Lacaz with the left hand footed pass. Rivera puts up the shot. Conrad, the sophomore, very decisively comes out and owns that box. Duarte, Mendoza, through ball looking for Davies. He is on side, but Worley is going to run over and pick it up at the edge of the box, no problem. 8.40 remaining. We'll be right back after this on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer on MyLocalRadio.com. America keeps moving, and Auto Farm Chevrolet is here to help you keep rolling. Whether you need a brand new vehicle or service on one you already own, Auto Farm Chevrolet is here to lend a helping hand. Our certified mechanics are knowledgeable, and our sales team takes the time to get to know you and what your needs are. Stop in today, Auto Farm Chevrolet, 624 Front Street, Evanston. Evanston's community-driven dealer. We're with you all the way to the finish as we only have under eight minutes to play in this one. 2-0 on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. Tigers lead it after a goal with 35 minutes left in the first half by Sosa and a goal with 25 minutes left in the first half by Hyatt. Evanston's defense has locked down ever since then. Of course, Rylan Worley has been his spectacular self. Rock Springs with the ball, setting up Duarte, taken away by Morrow. Mendez goes Richens, but Duarte, or sorry, Mendoza gets it right back. Through Evanston trying to find some type of momentum here as Ulysses Sains is challenged by Benedez. York Lacaz with the pass deflected over by Rock Springs. Derek Johnson goes Lacaz on the far sideline. Lacaz sends that one downfield, setting up a through ball and can't be calmed down by Ricardo Renova. Duarte. Goes Sosa on the right side, who calms it down. The sophomore definitely has shown some skill in the contest that we've seen, as this is the first of two meetings between the Red Devils. Good move here by Evanston. Chance here for Renova. Through ball, finding Richens. He'll settle it down. Goes back out to uh, Burgos. Excuse me. No, 11, sorry, that is Garfius. And taken away by Sosa. Through ball, finds Davies, he's offside. And with 6-11 left, it'll be a kick for Evanston. 2-0 on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. As Cooper Morrow will do the free kick for the Red Devils. Under six minutes to play. Line drive right at Richens. He launches a st uh, strike from well out there, about the 35-yard line, and Conrad is easily able to pick it off. 11 shots on goal for Rock Springs, 9 for Evanston as Sosa crosses up, trying to set it up, but it's off target. Long strike from the edge of the box from Hyatt, and another easy save by Rylan Worley. Captain Whitman clears it over and we got a whistle. It's gonna be white ball, so five minutes left to play. Evanston's gotta dig deep and keep fighting. Continue to buy yourself a chance as it's over the sideline. Last touch was Evanston. Duarte, we'll uh, actually we'll hand it off to Mendoza. Actually, no, it'll be Whitman. So that's the third ball throw in for Rock Springs. So they're killing some clock, four and a half minutes to go. As Mendoza now brings in Whitman. Evanston fans want a stalling penalty. 
or a stalling foul, but now they're going to set something up. Mendoza with a nice chance, but kicked out of the end zone by Evanston. Sosa calms it down, sends the strike from distance, and it's off of the top bar. Rebound shot is in through the uprights by Benedez, and it is a goal kick. 3.53 remaining. Ryland Worley sets up the kick. Caden Wiley and Jafet Godina check in for the Red Devils. High kick at the far side. Burgos can't keep it in bounds. It will go back to Rock Springs with three and a half to go. And they're going to take their time with this throw in with 3.16 to go. Throw in to Hernandez. Whitman off of an Evanston player and out of bounds. Another throw in coming and they do the same play where a Rock Springs player will pick it up, act like they're going to throw it and then get it over to Whitman. But Evanston with a real chance as the through ball is just out of control and Ramon Rivera can't calm it down. It's over the right side. 2.46 left in the second half. Rivera goes to Saints. And there's a battle happening on that far sideline. And a through ball, big opportunity for Rock Springs. Montez wins the foot race, tries to calm it down for a cross. Jafet Godina, though, with great defense, chases it out of the end zone. And Godina tries to pass to Garfias. Sosa with a strike on the run. Keeps the ball on the ground, and it goes wide. 2.08 remaining in the second half. As the Red Devils trail by two. Godina outside tomorrow. Back to Godina again. And he can't calm it down. He kicks it over the sideline. Sosa. Takes it, now gets it back to Duarte. He throws it in quickly at Mendoza. Evanston with a chance. David Perez tries to put a through ball on, but it's going to be chased down and taken away by Hudson Conrad. 93 seconds remaining in this one. And Evanston will be back in action on Thursday against Mountain View in the Evanston home opener. The boys will play at 5 o'clock live from the field at Bear Meadows Pond or Bear Meadows, excuse me, and the girls will be on the air at 3 o'clock live from Evanston Middle School's Evanston City Field. 106-107 remaining as the throw in from Evanston. As they're going to try to see if they can get something before this end. Sinche with a good pass to Garfius. Through ball looking for Lichty, but poked out of the way by Whitman. Sains, through ball, trying to find Lichty. And now a chance here for Garfias. Shot on goal right into the hands of Conrad. Ulysses Sains with the shot, and that is the 10th shot on goal in the game for the Red Devils. 28 seconds remaining in this one as Rock Springs will look to pick up three points in this conference victory as it is going to go over the end line. It'll be a goal kick with 14 seconds left as Worley gets the ball rolled to him from the far side. Seven seconds, and Evanston is going to have to take this loss and look for revenge when Rock Springs comes to Evanston later on in the season. Your final score on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard, the Rock Springs Tigers, two, Evanston, nothing. Goals coming for Rock Springs with 35 minutes left in the First half, so five minutes into the first half from the sophomore Josh Sosa, and then 25 minutes left in the first half, so 15 minutes into the first half from 
Hyatt, he is a sophomore as well. So two sophomore goals coming for Rock Springs as they take this one 2 nothing. Final score on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. We'll be right back after this with post-game coverage on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer on MyLocalRadio.com. What do you do when you lose a tooth? Mm -hmm. Put it under your pillow. <laughs> under my pillow. Or I'm like a treasure chest so you could put it in. Why do you do that? Because then the tooth fairy, tooth feather, tooth fairy comes for the tooth fairy, so the tooth fairy can come get them. And then what happens? I get money. We may not be the tooth fairy, but we can still take care of your teeth. Bear River Dental in Evanston. The big difference that sets Freeway Tire apart from other tire stores is the fact that we care. We care about the customer service we provide, we care about selling quality products at fair prices, and we care about your vehicle. So when you're looking for tires or having work done on your vehicle, everything from maintenance to major repairs, make sure you take it to the company that really cares, Freeway Tires, on Bear River Drive in Evanston. Stop in today or schedule an appointment with us online at freewaytires.com. It's time for your Jimmy John's Freaky Fast Recap, brought to you by Jimmy John's on 113 Front Street in Evanston, where fast and fresh meet. Rock Springs gets two goals early in the first half. One goal comes five minutes into the first half, and the other goal comes 15 minutes into the first half. Evanston's defense held strong, but their offense couldn't cash through on the 10 shots on goal. Final score, Rock Springs two, Evanston nothing. Goals coming from sophomore Josh Sosa, and sophomore Jeff Hyatt for Rock Springs. That's your Jimmy John's Freaky Fast Recap brought to you by Jimmy John's on 113 Front Street in Evanston. We're fast and fresh meat. We'll be right back after this with our Dr. McKay Franklin Precision Play of the Game on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer on MyLocalRadio.com. As one of the region's most visited websites, MyLocalRadio.com is here to serve you. Catch up on local and regional news and information. Buy, sell, or trade your good used items on the radio classifieds. Check the weather forecast or catch our live coverage of your high school teams in action all on mylocalradio.com. Like us on Facebook so you never miss a giveaway and visit mylocalradio.com today to stream it all live. As your local Rico, Toshiba, and Sharp dealer, Mountain West Business Solutions represents quality office equipment that lasts. We work with each client to understand your workflow, your goals, and your bottom line. Whether you lease or purchase office equipment, we have many ways to work with you to provide the best products at the best value. We also service and provide supplies for HP printers. Call Mountain West Business Solutions today. Let us help you find the best solutions for you and your business. Gee, Tommy, you look amazing. Did you try something different with your enamel? No way. I wouldn't do anything to alter these pearly whites, but I did see Dr. McKay Frankham, who told me if I didn't floss, I could miss up 35% of food particles. Really? He told you that? Yep, and you know what? He's 100% right. I started flossing, and now I look better than ever. Wow, I want to see Dr. McKay Frankham. Well, give him a call. 307-789-8910. Easy to remember, right? That's super easy. Dr. McKay Frankham at 307-789-8910. I'll call today. We got one more thing to do before we wrap up our boys' broadcast. Let's give out our Dr. McKay Frankham Precision Play of the Game, brought to you by Dr. McKay Frankham Precision Dentistry for the whole family. Call 307 79 8910 to schedule your appointment today. And I hate to sound like a broken record, we've given it to this guy before, but Rylan Worley had some beautiful saves in the game today. Joining me now, Matthew Peterson. Uh, First half, he was great. Second half, he was brilliant. Yep, he was well-tested as well. Uh, shut out in the second half. Really tightened things up after those two early goals. But you want to talk about precision play? How about that Superman diving save? Absolutely. He stops 10. So 10 saves for Rylan Worley today to add to his 23. That gives him 33 on the year. And the man has only allowed 11 goals so a pretty good goal percentage if you're Evanston. The back line needs to help him out a little bit more, but I'm sure that's something that, that they really did do in the second half especially. Yeah, and this is the kind of loss. Two nil losses are really frustrating for a coach because, A, you gave up two goals, and then so 
you want to blame the defense. But you didn't score anything, so you want to start blaming the offense. So a lot to dissect for Coach Richens here, but it had to start at the offensive end. Had some great looks in that second half. Potentially missed handball, what would have been a PK. Hard to really see from all the way up here. But that's a tough break that didn't go their way. But besides that, they had a lot of other good looks and just couldn't quite put the finishing touches on them. You know, I don't think the 2-0 score tells the story of this game. And the story of this game is you take away those early mistakes. Uh, this is a very, very evenly matched game. Yep, the Red Devils will be excited to face off against the Tigers at their home pitch later on this year. All right, that's going to do it. We're going to take a quick break. We'll have the standby screen on. We'll be back actually uh, in a few minutes as we are only about eight minutes away from the Lady Red Devils getting started against the Rock Springs Tigers. We'll be right back after this on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer on MyLocalRadio.com. Welcome to Rock Springs High, or should I say welcome back, as we get set for the Lady Red Devils matchup against the Lady Tigers. I'm Matthew Peterson, that's Elon Olive, and we're super excited to have you alongside us for the second half of this doubleheader. This time it'll be the Evanston girls team looking to bring a little bit of bragging rights back to their side of I-80. Elon went for a good one today between the Red Devils and the Tigers. Evanston coming off a... 5-0 victory last Friday out in Pinedale. Meanwhile, this Rock Springs team comes back from Jackson looking to lick their wounds. They fell 2-1 in overtime. So just like the men's side, we saw Evanston coming in with a win, Rock Springs coming back after a loss, and let's see what the girls are up to today. One thing you need to realize is that Jackson is a soccer school. The fact that they were able to take Jackson to overtime uh, that's a very positive sign for Rock Springs, and that is definitely something Coach Barton is paying attention to. We got our pregame coverage up. We're going to hear from Coach Barton, and we're going to get ready for kickoff between Evanston and Rock Springs. Don't go anywhere. More to come right here on this pre uh, presentation of my local radio When do you schedule soccer. doctor appointments? In bed before I fall asleep. In the car waiting to pick up my kids. We can even do it after breakfast. We all lead busy lives. Online appointment scheduling puts you in control. In just 90 seconds, you can make an appointment with a primary care provider or specialist at evanstonanytime.com. Select the day and time most convenient for you. Enter some basic information, and just like that, you're scheduled for care. Schedule appointments for next day and beyond at evanstonanytime.com. Time flies, especially when you're having fun. This is Jeremy Rex, manager at TBRS in Evanston. It's hard to believe that we've been here almost a year with our new management team and staff. Did you know that you can have your vehicle detailed, your windshield replaced, ship repair done, or get your trailer refinished or rewired at TBRS? Of course, we are a full-service collision repair shop, too. You can even change your oil and your brakes. Visit TBRS today. Let TBR fix your car. 515 County Road, Evanston. 
Trona Valley Federal Credit Union, we know our members by name and we love working with them face to face. But did you know that members can also handle almost all banking online? Everything from managing your accounts and paying bills to applying for all types of loans. It's simple and we're happy to help you get started. Join Trona Valley Federal Credit Union today. We're a caring partner dedicated to your financial success. TronaValley.com, member NCUA. Welcome back to our pregame coverage. Clock reads just north of 3.30 remaining until the kickoff here at Rock Springs High. And so let's get ready for our – we've got time for Coach Barton interview. Elon, you think? No, we're, we're running a little short on time, although it looks like they just may have reset the timer up there. We're going to keep an eye on this for you. Actually, yeah, we definitely have time if they're going to go 10 minutes. Yeah, they just tacked on some more time out of nowhere. So with that being said – Let's get ready to hear from Coach Barton of the Evanston Lady Red Devils. Here with Evanston girls soccer coach Carlin Barton. Coach Barton, uh, you guys, much like the boys, had a very successful day last Friday in Pinedale with a 5 nothing victory. What did you guys learn about yourselves in this non-conference contest? Well, what I learned is um, our our team put together a lot of great passes. They were using the middle of the field to get it out to the um, corners so that we weren't doing just a straight at the goal attack um, that we've been kind of falling into. Um, and I thought that against the Pinedale team, which I, I think they're a pretty good team, um, that we were able to implement that um, with great success. And so I'm excited with what we put together um, offensively, what we can do in the future. So it, I thought it was great. Coach, what does this do for you guys as you return to conference play against Rock Springs on Tuesday? Well, I think it gives us confidence. We had, you know, kind of a bummer of a weekend when we went down to Casper. So I think it helps buoy up the spirits of the team. And also, you know, I think it shows the team that we can learn new things and that, you know, we're not going to have to sit back the whole game against Rock Springs. We can definitely have an attack. Coach, after that 5 nothing win against Green River, you said that this game proves that we can score. It proves that we can get down and we can still come back. Uh, a 5-0 win against Pinedale, does that do the same thing for you guys? Yeah, I think it does. I mean, it's against Rock Springs, it's going to be more of – you know, a more of a defensive game. But I think when we have those opportunities, um, I think we can get out. And so we're not going to just be stuck in a defensive formation. I think we can get out and have some um, shots on goal. Coach, you have got goals from Lauren Hyatt last game. That was a player that I know you guys were anxious to get started because she is your forward. What does it mean when you've got goal scores in Lauren Hyatt, Q Penalosa, uh, Kinley Hinsey, and the list goes on and on? What does it mean when you have multiple weapons like that? It, it just means that uh, we don't have to get it to one person. Like, we have multiple threats. And we have, like, I think five different people that can attack really well uh, against the goal and have very accurate shots. So we can spread it out. And if they focus just on one person, let's say if they just focus on Lauren, well, they're going to be in for a surprise. Coach, I know it's hard to answer the question of what are you guys expecting from Rock Springs since we didn't have soccer in 2020, but what do you guys historically get from Rock Springs that Evanston fans need to keep an eye on? Well, historically, we've um, we've really kind of had to sit back uh, and kind of park a little bit in the defensive end and really pack it in and try to keep them from scoring. Um, I think we're still going to have to do that in a sense that we're gonna. It's going to be not as much of an up and down game, but I don't think it's going to be as much of that as it has been in the past. I think we're going to be there. But I think we're going to have opportunities to transition. And I think my team has shown that they're able to transition out of that just low defensive block. Coach, if you could talk about maybe the advantage Evanston girls soccer has right now, having so many 
uh, great players that are experienced, but there's also some real talent in that underclassman. Of course, comes to mind Kenley Hensey, Brinkley Frankum, your keeper, who's only a sophomore. Just talk a bit about how balanced this team is. Well, yeah, it's balanced. And in fact, um, against the game, the game against Pindell, I got Jay Lee Higdon in. She went in and helped out on the defense. Um, Bella Dover, as a sophomore, she's getting more time. And Celeste, um, Ayala, I, I got to use her more. I just got to figure it out because she is a great little player. Um, so I, I was really excited at Pindell because I can see – I can see a future, not just this year with those um, five seniors graduating, six seniors, but I can see a future coming up with some of these underclassmen that it's just not going to end. It's going to keep going. So I'm really excited, and I'm excited to get more underclassmen some time and experience in a varsity game. Coach, I've heard that when you took over the program, there was a lot of kind of teaching the players soccer fundamentals and just kind of building those basic skills. Now that it seems like you have a pipeline with skilled players and young talent, uh, how excited should Evanston girls soccer fans be for not only this year, but years to come? Well, I think we definitely have turned a corner. I, I think we have more girls coming in skilled. I mean, of course, we have to do a lot of skill building than most programs, but I think we know how to do that. Um, and I think girls are seeing how to play soccer, like what we did against Pinedale. It's not just having a long kick up the field and, yay, that's so exciting. It's They're seeing how to connect passes. So just being able to see what you can do with those skills and experience it in practice, that is something we can build on that, you know, we haven't been able to build on before. So they're seeing what they can do now. That's Coach Carlin Barton, head coach for Evanston Girls Soccer. They'll be in action Tuesday against Rock Springs back to conference play. Coach, thank you so much for the time. Anything else? Nope, just it's a great day to be a Lady Devil, and I just hope both the girls and the boys team, we can pull out of there with a win. That would be so awesome. Big thanks to Coach Barton for some of her time leading up to this matchup. Clock currently reads 3.30 until kickoff, but we were alerted that the reason they added more time on is that they're waiting on the officials to arrive to the pitch from the JV game, which was played at a different location. I believe it was over at uh, Rock Springs Middle School. So we're waiting for the officials to get here. Uh, let's see if they add more time. I've got some eyes on the field right now. As to, as to you guys, I don't see anyone um, looking like they're dressed like a zebra. So we'll, we will wait and see. we got three minutes to go. We'll step aside for a quick break, and we'll have some more pregame coverage leading up to the Lady Red Devils and Lady Tigers here at Rock Springs High. Gee, Tommy, you look amazing. Did you try something different with your enamel? No way. I wouldn't do anything to alter these pearly whites, but I did see Dr. McKay Frankum, who told me if I didn't floss, I could miss up 35% of food particles. Really? He told you that? Yep, and you know what? He's 100% right. I started flossing, and now I look better than ever. Wow, I want to see Dr. McKay Frankum. Well, give him a call. 307-789-8910. Easy to remember, right? That's super easy. Dr. McKay Frankum at 307-789-8910. I'll call today. When your vehicle needs new tires, any tire store can get you back on the road. But only Plains Tire can get you rolling again with the peace of mind that you were treated well, paid a fair price, and that you'll be taken care of for the life of the tire. At Plains Tire, trained tire technicians mount and expertly balance your new tires, replace the valve stems, and hand check each lug nut to make sure it's all tight and secure. Plus, you'll get lifetime alignment checks and tire rotations only at Plains Tire, 157 Bear River Drive, Evanston. Visit PlainsTire.com.
it appears we are getting at least ready for kickoff. Uh, the clock has stopped at three minutes. Both teams kind of huddling up right now. Still have yet to see an official unless they're just covered in winter gear. Talk about some Wyoming soccer. After a beautiful day yesterday in Evanston, Mother Nature had different plans for today. Ugliness came down in Evanston this morning. Didn't really touch Rock Springs, though. No snow here, but some bitterly cold temperatures for April uh, when you're out there in shorts and a T-shirt and uh, in in their soccer kits. I'm Matthew Peterson. Elon Olive operating our camera for this one. Hopefully we can get a camera operator and free him up to join me up in the booth where it's a lot warmer than right down there on the pitch. Get you guys set for kickoff today. Still waiting on those officials, I believe. Uh, and, and that's my best estimate here. But let's talk a little bit about what the Red Devils have been up to lately and what's coming up on the schedule. So for Evanston, they're coming off that 5-0 victory at Pinedale. That was last Friday, uh, a couple days ago now. Um, it's only Tuesday. Wow, can you believe it? And then they're coming off that un unsuccessful trip to uh, Casper. They went 0-2 against Natrona County and Kelly Walsh. Fell to Natrona County 1-0 and lost to Kelly Walsh 3-0. Both teams right now lining up as if they're ready for the national anthem or some starting lineups. I think they'll probably get those out of the way, and then once the officials are here, we'll get the whistle and get underway. Uh, but yeah, Evanston coming in today with a 2-0 and 2 overall record. As for Rock Springs, they got one win, no draws, and two losses to their name. Coming in after a 2-1 defeat at Jackson, their last time out on the pitch in overtime. And then when you check out what's coming up for the Red Devil soccer team and the calendar, they got Rock Springs now. They're going to go home for their home debut this Thursday against Mountain View. The location is a little bit fluctuating. The last I heard is it's going to be played at Evanston Middle School. We should have coverage for you as sometimes the times conflict with the boys' games. Um, but shouldn't be an issue so that's coming up this thursday then on april 13th they're going to travel to star valley then on the 16th they're over in jackson and that's going to do it for their away portion of the schedule well they just restarted the clock here so at one point it read three minutes now we're at 233 and counting looks like we're still waiting for an official though or officials i should say and that's kind of the forgotten ingredient um, for any sporting event. You're not going to have much of a game or contest or match without the officials, but now we see them. Okay, so they're right there in the middle. My eyes finally got them in my sight. So how about we step aside for another quick break here in our pregame coverage, and when we return, we should have the starting lineups and the national anthem potentially right here on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of my local radio sports on this Evanston Red Devil soccer matchup at Rock Springs. What do you do when you lose a tooth? Um, put it under your pillow. <laughs> under my pillow. Or well, I'm like a treasure chest so you could put it in. Why do you do that? Because then the tooth fairy, tooth feather, Tooth fairy comes for the tooth fairy, so the tooth fairy can come get them. And then what happens? I get money. We may not be the tooth fairy, but we can still take care of your teeth. Bear River Dental in Evanston. America keeps moving and Auto Farm Chevrolet is here to help you keep rolling. Whether you need a brand new vehicle or service on one you already own, Auto Farm Chevrolet is here to lend a helping hand. Our certified mechanics are knowledgeable, and our sales team takes the time to get to know you and what your needs are. Stop in today, Auto Farm Chevrolet, 624 Front Street, Evanston. Evanston's community-driven dealer. At Ellingford Brothers. We're known for an excellent steel shop and quality cement. We also provide other products all year round. Sand and different sizes of gravel for road base and landscaping in the summer and fall. Traction in the winter and mud control in the spring. Bark for landscaping in the summer and winterization in the fall. And topsoil. Spring, summer, and fall. Prices are always honest. Pickup or delivery. Ellingford Brothers, your year-round source for so many things. Stop in today at 221 County Road in Evanston.
Welcome back to Rock Springs High. Let's get you guys set for kickoff here in the first half of action. And the buzzer sounds. I see some officials in bright yellow top. So we should be ready to go for this matchup between the Red Devils and the Tigers. Evanston looking for their third victory of the season. Meanwhile, Rock Springs trying to find number two as we are still early in this 2021 season. Right now, the captain's being debriefed by both officials, or all three, and then we'll get the starting lineups and then the kickoff. So we are just moments away. We appreciate your patience as we are a little bit behind schedule here at Rock Springs. And Elon off manning that camera right now. What a great job he's doing highlighting the starters for the Evanston Red Devils, who, as you can tell, are doing all they can to stay warm. As you guys watch this one from, I hope, your nice, warm living rooms, it's not the same situation out here on the Rock Springs football field. Uh, a cold day, but, you know, nevertheless, we're happy to have some soccer underway. As you never know, in April, you might get some snow, you might get some sleet, and you could sideline yourself for a game or two, but it appears we are, I think we're ready for at least the starting lineups and then 40 minutes of soccer in the first half. Are they going to do the national anthem first? There's a bit of confusion going on. We'll keep it right here, though. We're not going anywhere on this First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer being brought to you in part by Auto Farm Chevrolet. You went to County School District number one, Ellingford Brothers, along with several other great and fantastic Red Devils supporting businesses. We'll sprinkle those in throughout the broadcast. Now we got 40 minutes on the clock, and we're going to get you the starting lineups as soon as they are announced. For Evanston, I would suspect it's close to the usual 11. May see Coach Barton make some changes here and there, but you know what? After a 5 0 victory last time out, you can't envision that she wants changes too much. I mean, don't fix what's not broken, right? That's the saying. So. Let's see what we got in store for us as the officials look like they're getting ready to start this one up. Evanston sporting their away kits, those white tops, red bottoms. Red numbers on the front and back, and now we're getting ready to walk out. Here we go. Meanwhile, as for Rock Springs, they're in an all-black outfit. Black tops, black bottoms with orange numbers on the chest. And I must say, for being in Rock Springs right now, the wind is not that bad. Look, look at those flags scattered throughout the field and they're not whipping around too much and it looks like we're just about ready now to get the starting lineups good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to tiger stadium for tonight's soccer matchup with the evanston lady red devils and your rock springs lady tigers at this time if i could please have everyone rise Face the American flag, remove your headgear in the singing of our national anthem.
Beautiful rendition of our nation's anthem. And now we're just about set for the starting lineup for these two sides. If I could have everyone's attention before we start with uh, starting lineups, I'd like to make a quick announcement. One year ago, the Rock Springs girls soccer team lost one of their own, a coach, a role model, and a member of our family. Stephen Fisher dedicated his life to help the youth of the community in which he lived. And this year, the girls are dedicating their season in his memory. The girls are asking that everyone take a moment of silence and reflect on their memories of Coach Fisher. Thank you. And now, your starting lineups for your Lady Red Devils. Number one, sophomore, Brinkley Franken. Brinkley Franken, the sophomore senior, in net. Followed by Katie Four, Saxon, had a last, senior, had a goal Brinkley. in the last game. Hugh Penaloza gets a start. Number six, junior, Natalie Gonzalez. Number seven, senior, Rachel Hack. Number 11, freshman, Kinley Hintz. Number 13, senior, Natalie Mota. Number 19, senior, Lauren Hyatt. Number 21, junior, Katie Giroux. Number 22, junior, Melina Wilson. And finally, number 23, junior, Morgan Chandler. And now your starting lineups for your Rock Springs Lady Tigers. Senior, number seven, Alex Moeller. Junior, number one, Emily Toucher. Junior, number two, Brecken Hunsaker. Senior, number three, Zoe Silovich. Junior, number six, Novali Moses. Junior, number eight, Kylie Knudsen. Junior, number nine, Carly Nelson. Senior, number 13, Olivia Politti. Senior, number 14, Amory Willoughby. Senior, number 18, Lauren Provisor. And finally, junior, number 23, Alex Bolton. We got the starting 11 for both sides now, and we should be ready to get going from Rock Springs for this one. Both teams huddling up. Evanston nearing the end of this away stretch to end the sea or to start the season. Meanwhile, for Rock Springs, a big game for them as they look to rebound against their loss last time out in Jackson. In goal for Rock Springs, as is senior Alex Moeller, number seven. And then as for the Red Devils, it is sophomore Brinkley Frankham. And it looks like we got a camera operator, so we should get Elon Olive up here soon for some color commentary, but for the time being, it is Evanston to kick off to start the game. Just waiting the whistle and should be good to go. And off and running we are after Hyatt plays it back and the Red Devils immediately Kicking all the way up the field. Bounced around and played around the back line of Rock Springs. Tigers with a throw in coming up now.
deep throw in is received by Emily Tusher. Evanston playing it back to Chandler for a second. Moved inside and taken away. The Tigers with it going all the way up and it hits what looked like an arm of Evanston indeed. So quick restart by Rock Springs though gives them a good opportunity. Cross just out of the reach of a Lady Tiger out of play and a goal kick coming up for Frankham. Elon, happy to have you back. Are you getting warm? Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, definitely a little cold out there today, so I'm not envious of the girls at all right now. No, definitely some chilly temperatures. Hopefully is going to be warming up soon. Real quick, a big thank you to Shelby. She took over for camera duty over down there, so really appreciate her. Evanston, a little sloppiness on their own half right now, playing it out of bounds and setting up a Rock Springs throw in for Bolton. On the wing, now played towards the box and finds the foot of Nelson, but couldn't quite connect and then her shot well wide. So two quick shots for the Rock Springs Lady Tigers, but neither one of them close to Frankham in net whatsoever. Right now it's 39 degrees out there, so definitely not ideal I soccer bet that weather. Wind, that but wind chill probably makes it feel more like oh, 30 degrees. Probably. Taken away. Emily Tauscher with it. Tauscher with a slow roller, and it's easily picked up by Frankham. We've seen Frankham time and time again be one of the pr most promising keepers in the state when it comes to girls' soccer. She has been absolutely phenomenal this uh, first year as the starting keeper for Evanston. Red Devils advancing the ball up the field right now as we approach the 37-minute mark. And ping-ponged around, hits the deck, and Rocks brings the first one to it. Clearing attempt goes out of play. So a throw in coming up for the Red Devils on their offensive third. Chandler to throw it in. You can hear that wind start to howl a little bit as it's blowing kind of um, cross field right now. So that may be something to keep an eye on. Yeah, it feels like it's going every single direction right now as Evanston looked for a hawk, and then Chandler boots it towards the center, but falls to a Tiger. Kind of a swirling wind. Also, one thing to keep to kind of point out, Tiger Stadium is technically kind of a sub uh, underground type bowl stadium because the entrance that we went through is actually street level, and then you drop down into the bleachers. Good opportunity now for Rock Springs as Hunsaker has it on the wing, looking to cross it over, but it's disrupted by the Red Devils. Malia Wilson with great defense on that end. Also, Katie DeRue doing a good job turning on the Jets, showing that rocket speed to really help out Evanston. Throw in a little too tall, and the Lady Tigers have it now. Trying to knife her way through the defense. Moses loses it, plays it back now. Entry kick is blocked away. Hunsaker trying to come up with it. Long shot, partially deflected, gets out of play, and we're going to get our first corner kick with just over 35 minutes to play in the opening half. First real opportunity for Rock Springs. We'll see what the uh, sophomore Brinkley Frankham is able to do. Kyle Stack the boxes as the goal kick results in oh. the corner kick results in a headed goal. Not sure who got their head on that one. Looks like it was Tauscher, Emily Tauscher, a junior, able to put her noggin right on it and beat the broadcast crew to it. So it's one nothing Rock Springs with a little under 35 minutes to play in the opening half. And that really is one of those situations where that was such a well-struck corner kick, planted it right where she was intending it to. And there's not much you can do about that if you're Brink, uh, Brinkley Frankham. Yeah, that's right in on, Fra on Frankham's grill. 
just a couple feet away from her, but a well-timed header off a set piece on a corner, and it's now 1-0 Rock Springs as the Red Devils fall behind quickly and looking for looking to formulate a response as they get it on the wing here with Saxton. Played back and over to Mota. Moved up now to Nelson, and Nelson quickly bothered by two Lady Red Devils as the ball escapes the field of play, and we get a throw-in coming up for the Red Devils. So just like the men's game, right? Yeah, 35 minutes I mean, almost like to it, a yeah. script. Uh, two goals happening for the Rock Springs, one for the boys, one for the girl, at the almost exact same time in the game. Hopefully the story ends a little differently right now for Evanston as the boys game resulted in a 2-0 victory for Rock Springs. Malia Wilson got injured in the Kelly Walsh game. She took that free kick. Good to see her back on the pitch. Yeah, very promising sight. Wilson, one of the best athletes on the field. Multi-sport player as she gets in on defense there, loses her footing for a moment, but Chandler's there to clean up the mess and escort the ball out of play. She's going to be definitely a big part of that uh, – basketball team the lady red devils basketball team that they're building next year bigger part of this soccer team this year and throw in i guess is partially you can't throw the ball from out of bounds to out of bounds so it must have been hit by a, a rock springs player but now the red devils with a chandler on the throw going up the middle to hyatt knocked around the defense and poked out a play by evanston Saxton in on the defense, and now they're going to say it's last touch by Rock Springs. So Modok with a quick restart throws it into Hawk. Penaloza back inside and back over to Hawk. Kausha with one goal. Nice cross across field. Shot coming up, and it is off the post and in. And almost to a T, like you mentioned, quick 2-0 lead for Rock Springs. And Rock Springs quickly doubles up their advantage. They have a 2-0 lead now. Goal coming off the foot of Kylie Knudsen. With just over 32 minutes to go in the first half, so the... Red Devils find themselves in an early hole. Let's see if they can formulate a response. Checking in on the MyLocalRadio.com chat room. Paige Tannenbaum, absolutely right. Plenty of game left. And uh, as we mentioned in the boys' game, a two-goal lead is not a comfortable lead. Maybe we'll see a side of this Red Devil team that they really need to evoke, which is some urgency maybe a little early on, not getting too complacent. And Saxton tries to dribble her way past the defense but unable to this time. Rock Springs with some nice ball movement. Approaching the box and a long shot is easily fielded by Frankham. Rock Springs comes in with a one and two overall record, one and one record in the conference, a plus seven goal differential in the conference. However, only a plus three overall goal differential. Evanston on the other hand, comes in with a negative one goal differential in the conference and a plus six goal differential overall. Pass nearly taken away by Evanston. Instead, it's knocked out of play and a throw in now for Rock Springs. Just over 31 minutes remaining in the first half. We'll use this time to step aside for a quick break. We'll be right back on our first big presentation of Red Devil Soccer. As your local Rico, Toshiba, and Sharp dealer, Mountain West Business Solutions represents quality office equipment that lasts. We work with each client to understand your workflow, your goals, and your bottom line. Whether you lease or purchase office equipment, we have many ways to work with you to provide the best products at the best value. We also service and provide supplies for HP printers. Call Mountain West Business Solutions today. Let us help you find the best solutions for you and your business. 
Whatever takes you to Evanston, whether it's high school sports, a teaching conference, music festivals, speech and debate, or your job, always book your hotel reservations at the Best Western Dunmar Inn. With 165 ground level rooms on 10 acres, the Best Western offers everything you need, including newly renovated rooms, a business office, workout room, outdoor pool, and full service restaurant, plus complimentary breakfast with every stay. Whenever you're in Evanston, make your hotel reservations with your friends at the Best Western Dunmar Inn. And a big clearing attempt by the Red Devils. Successful. Put it back on the Rock Springs half of the field. Now played by Solovich. And a whistle blows, and it's going to go against Hyatt and the Red Devils. So a Free kick coming up for Rock Springs. Just under 30 minutes to play. 2-0 uh, lead right now for Rock Springs on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard as Chandler has that ball squeezed through her legs and now knocking it forward on the field but trying to get it out of her defensive end. Right now it looks like Rock Springs is kind of doing a little bit like what we saw Kelly Walsh do to the boys and that's kind of work it around in the midfield with these short little passes, try to grind the legs off of Evanston early. Red Devils need to get in the uh, middle of some passes like what we just saw there from Katie Saxton. Clearing attempt, trying to find Hinsey, but it gets past her and goes right back to Rock Springs. Elon, you're exactly right. This Rock Springs crew right now taking all the time in the world in terms of possession between the two 30-yard lines. And they are very content with knocking the ball around and wearing down and out this Red Devil crew. It'll be up to Evanston to try and get some possession of their own and flip the tables on them. Absolutely. That being said, it's only a 2-0 game right now, and we've said it over and over again. That is not a comfortable lead against any team. A bit of a collision there as Hunsaker hits the deck after colliding with Daru. Katie Daru. And Daru gives about four or five inches up, and it was Hunsaker who went down. Yeah. Daru was just... Stand on her ground there. Just kind of walked away like nothing happened. Good takeaway now by Hawk. Hawk looking up for an open high hit, but she has that one stripped away. Taken away by Profazer, and now it's back with Rock Springs as they get uh, close to half field. Little under 28 minutes to go in the first half. Chandler to throw it in. Still plenty of half left, no no much plenty of game left. So Yeah, I mean, you, you don't really want to even look at the time no. here. You just want to try and start building some rhythm on offense as that one is just too strong for a chasing Hawk, and that's going to bring up a goal kick coming up for the Tigers. You know, I'm looking at the starting lineup here for Rock Springs. Off a lot of juniors, seniors, so a lot of uh, – a lot of experience for this team. Yeah, they missed last year, but the, the seniors in particular, they were sophomores, so they've got definite experience. Uh, the, the juniors, probably their first time playing. Yeah, and a lot of juniors soccer. in yeah. the starting lineup especially. But the impression you get is they've played together before. They've got great chemistry. They know where each other is at at all times. So that's something that Evanston needs to bust into and try to get into that, uh, that chemistry and kind of bust up their unpredictability a little bit. Banged around the back end of Rock Springs. Now they push it forward. And running into some difficulty was Hunsaker. And she retreats it back and finds an open teammate. Look With at it the now is Pelodi and just complete possession and will as Chandler. Gets a piece of that one, blasts it up, but it goes right back to the Tigers. I want to bring your attention to something. There was a pass happening around the 50-yard line, and it was a short one. Number 14, Willoughby immediately starts backpedaling, even though she could have intercepted it, because she knew that there was a teammate open in her right side. That only comes from, again, playing with each other and building that type of chemistry. Hyatt on the wing, looking for someone, but no one's there. Good idea, no one in the offensive zone as it is chased down and after by Mota for the Red Devils. Little over 25 minutes to play in the opening half. 
Mota with a knee to it, playing it upfield, and now gets it right back. Good idea, Saxton just not quick enough to receive it. 2-0 on the impact physical therapy scoreboard in favor of the home team in black. Strong entry pass is denied initially. Saxon fighting for it, and it's given right back to Peloti. The Tigers going from one wing to another. Crossing it inside, looking for Hunsaker, and whistle blows, and it's going to go against Rock Springs, so Evanston will have a free kick with little over 24 and a half minutes to go in the first 40. Nice move there by Malia Wilson to try to rush it to maybe try to catch them off guard. Hyatt was where she needs to be. She just couldn't calm it down with that first touch. Throw in coming up for the Red Devils on the offensive third. Looks for Hyatt along the edge, and Hyatt battling for it, comes nice. up with it. Plays it back. Good move, and a strong strike is received, and good save in net by Moeller. First time she's really been tested all day long. Q Penalosa with the strike there for the Red Devils. First shot on goal for Evanston nearly midway through the first half. Played up and over to Nelson. Nelson finding a trailing teammate, Bolton. And Mota just too strong to handle. Great defense by Mota. You know, you look at the height of these Rock Springs players, and they're your prototypical soccer players. They're tall, they're lean, and they're quick. Evanston's got a lot of talent. Oh, boy. Whew. Good that clearance was right there. Comes up with a corner kick now, and last time Evanston had a corner kick happen, it resulted in a goal, so they look to try and clean up that part of their play. As I was saying, Evanston does not have that prototypical typical soccer uh, players playing that defense. Mota just app gives up probably two to three inches to the defender, but she continues to fight and deny everything. Another and another goal. goal off the corner kick. That's something Coach Barton is going to be really frustrated with because that's something you practice a lot is re making the most out of defending these set pieces, but Rock Springs executing them to a T. But finishing that thought, Evanston just has a lot of great athletes that they they fight, and I think that Mota forcing it out of bounds on that play a few sequences ago is a perfect example of it. So 3-0 lead now for the Tigers. Just over 22 minutes to go in the first half. Red Devils looking to find some rhythm off on the offensive end. First, they got to stop Nelson and the Tigers. Cross going in. They've got a man, but it's cleared away by Chandler. Laid back by Rock Springs, trying to get away from the Red Devil defense and get some space and slow it down as we get below 22 minutes to play in the first half. Chandler disrupting the offense of Rock Springs. Nick nicks it out of play and a throw in coming up for the Tigers. Coming in for Evanston, that is Callie Bell, I believe. No, sorry, J.C. Bardsley. Rock Springs playing it along their back line and finding some difficulty now as pressure arises from Saxton. Good boot by the Tigers off the foot of Willoughby. Quick throw and received by Moses. Gives it right back to where it came from, but then stripped away by the Red Devils. Evanston with it, looking to gain some momentum. Penaloza crossing half field just about. Instead goes back to an open Hawk. Hawk trying to evade her nearest defender. Instead she finds Saxton. Nice pass up to Penaloza. Breaks past one defender, and then it's kicked back over to Hawk. 
Her pass stripped away. Moses with it. Good lead pass goes up the side and chasing after this is Nelson. Nelson with a strong cross. Open box, but no one's home and goes from one end to the other. Chandler on the defense. Just over 20 minutes to play in the half. Nice job there by Chandler to continue to fight and to challenge for that. Chandler with a strong clearance only to find a Rock Spring Tiger on the receiving end, but now the Red Devils get it out into some open space with Penaloza. Playing it back to Hawk, looking for Penaloza as she was sprinting down the side, but it's tipped in, deflected out of play. Across the halfway point of this first half, it's 3-0 Tigers on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. I think two players you got to keep your eye on if you're Evanston play, uh, fans is Katie Drew and Nayeli Mota. They have done everything that they can in that defensive part, uh, defensive third. Really where the lapses are happening is in the midfield where Rock Springs is able to launch on these runs and set up those corners. Katie Saxton th to throw it in now for Evanston. Looking for Hyatt. Gets past her, and it's played back to the goaltender, Moeller. Little under 19 minutes to go in the opening half. Moeller with a big boot trying to clear her lines, and indeed she does. Finds an open Hunsaker. Knocked around between a triangle of Tigers, but now broken up by Evanston only to have Hunsaker reclaim possession. Nice job by Katie Derue to clear that one out. Derue looking for Hyatt in the middle of the field. Hyatt, one of the go-to scorers on this Red Devil team. They sure could use something right now. Instead, her pass to Penaloza finds the foot of a Rock Spring player and knocked out of bounds. Again, it's gonna, I think it's really going to come down to Katie Derue and Nayeli Mota the rest of the way. If they can continue to sweep away and kind of take care of some things. Also, Malia Wilson on the defensive line. Those three, I think, are going to be key to Evanston pulling off a comeback. Chandler for another throw-in. Just under 18 minutes to go. Rock Springs playing it up and using the sideline to their advantage. Looking inside for Hunsaker. She slows it down and looks right where it came from. Instead, it's broken up by the Red Devils. Evanston stripping the ball away and playing it up. Hincy forced that takeaway, and with just over 17 minutes to go, it's the Red Devils still searching for goal number one. Throw in now for the Tigers. Two Red Devils. Warming up on the sideline. And looks like we get a whistle and appears to be a free kick now for Evanston. It's going to be Celeste Ayala Gonzalez as well as a number 12 standing next to her. Number 12. I don't see a number 12 on this roster. Jaylee Higdon. Higdon making her first varsity appearance by my records. But a spark is needed for Coach Barton and company. But a strong tackle right there may force a turnover. Indeed it does. Back to Hawk. Great play by Hintzy. Hintzy's only a freshman, and we've seen her play above that time and time again. Hintzy going to the floor again, and it is Mota knocking it out, and a whistle blows, and backtrack after that Hintzy tackle. A whistle blew, and the play on was ruled backwards and we're going to have a free kick coming up from the 25 yard line for the Tigers with a little under 16 minutes to go in the first 40. Tauscher hit the deck and hit the deck hard after a contact with the Lady Red Devil and that's where this free kick's coming from. So a free kick here and this is something Rock Springs has had no issues in terms of set pieces so far. They've got two goals from corner kicks. Now their first real in-close free kick. Let's see what they draw up. 
Couple decoys, and now it's lofted over the wall, and instead it's headed out of danger by Wilson. Nice kick by Bardsley. Danger still looms as Rock Springs has it on the wing. And they've got it inside the box now. Looking to pull the trigger on a shot. Hunsaker has it blocked. Huge block by the Red Devils to avoid a fourth potential goal. That looked like Nayeli Mota again. I think her, Caitlin Daru, and Malia Wilson are going to be key today. Little under 15 minutes to go. 3-0 lead for the home team on our Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. Cleared up by Rock Springs and finding the feet of Weinrich. Now on the wing with Pelodi. Pelodi's shot is just too wide and an easy pickup now for Frankham. And a goal kick coming up with a little over 14 minutes to go in the first half. And the Red Devils making some changes indeed right now. This is Celeste Ayala Gomez and Jaylee Higdon coming in. So some new faces right now for Evanston. It's clear that Coach Barton is sending a message. We, we need to put people out there that can make something happen right now because we're not getting any positive results at the moment. Well, specifically with Gomez, Coach Barton told us in the pregame interview, I've got to figure out a way to use her. She's a dynamic, explosive player. We need to figure out a way to use her, and it looks like that is exactly what Coach Barton has kind of figured, that she can come in here and provide a spark plug. Iola Gomez, just a freshman. And Rock we, Springs. And if we are pronouncing that incorrect, we are so sorry. <laughs> Rock Springs knocking along their back lines and moving up to Pelodi. Good ball movement right now by Rock Springs as it goes to Weinrich. Cross is knocked out by Chandler. Finds Hinsey at the middle of the field. Just over 13 minutes to go. Hawk does a good job kind of racing to the ball there. Nice overhead pass right now to Pelodi. Good clearance by the Red Devils. Tauscher moving it inside and loading up but having a shot taken away by Hinsey now. Up to Ayala Gomez. Hensi knocking it forward, but not a Red Devil in sight, and an easy pickup for Moeller. Just a little north of 12 and a half to go in the opening 40 minutes here from Rock Springs High. Chandler keeping it inside on the far side line, and now a throw in coming up for the Red Devils. Morgan Chandler. Loves to play that left back position on that far wing usually, and she's got an in a, she's got an ability to just play the whole sideline start to finish from one end to another, and that's not a very common uh, role for those backs. Rock Springs looks like they've got four girls checking in right now. Yeah, a handful of substitutions being made now by the Tigers with just under 12 to go in the opening half. Throw in by Rock Springs is headed out of danger for a second. Another throw in and another clearance by Chandler only to fall to a team in black. Shot blocked by Penaloza. Bardsley with a nice move, but... Rock Springs is going to try to take it away from her. Yeah, that's been the story so far for Evanston. They get one thing down, but they just can't quite go up, finish 100% because there's always a lady in black at the other end. You saw the Kelly Walsh boys game. Does this rem does this team remind you of that Kelly Walsh boys team a little bit? Yeah, there's definitely some similarities in terms of their goal is possession soccer, right? They want to hold on to it and wear you out. So for Evanston, in order to combat that, there's a little bit of we need to have possession, but also when we get our chances, we have to make the most of them as Frankham charges in and scoops up the cross. Just over 10 and a half to go. Well, Evanston wants to push the pace, and with Lauren Hyatt standing on the sideline getting ready to check in, I think that is probably going to be 
what they need to do moving forward. Free kick coming up for the Red Devils. But for Evanston right now, I'd envision at the half, Coach Barton saying, hey, we've got to play transition soccer. We've got to play quick, and when we get our chances, we've got to catch this Rock Springs team on the wrong half of midfield. Because look at this Rock Springs team right now. Not a single player on the oh, back oh, half of the 50-yard line as that shot nearly went in, but just wide, and Frankham dodges another bullet that time as we surface below 10 minutes. And again, I mean... Looking at the names on Rock Springs, a lot of them don't sound familiar to me, which means they didn't play volleyball, they didn't play basketball. So I wonder if this is a team that's that's been together for a while. They've played club. They've probably played since they were in middle school, since AYSO. And you see that their connection is very, very strong. Moda to throw it in. Strong throw in. Knocked out of play, though, by Hamilton. Is it me, or does Evanston look like they give up some height a little bit at almost every posi position? Yeah, there's definitely some height going in the Tigers' favor right now as it's played up and over to Weinrich, and she looks for an open man at midfield. Which it makes those plays where you see Nayeli Mota force a ball out of bounds or Caitlin Daru or Malia Wilson or whatever is going on in that back defensive line makes those plays a little bit more impressive when you realize the size advantage that they're kind of suffering right now. Chandler clears it out and pauses the threat for the moment. 8.40 and counting to go in the first half. Three nil Tigers on the impact physical therapy scoreboard. Moved in by Hunsaker and goes in and out of the box from one end to another. Another cross on the way so from Silovich, and that one is just seared wide. And a sigh of relief comes from Evanston as another close call for Rock Springs that they're not quite able to connect. It's already a 3 nothing lead, and that's that goal that you're really kind of searching for. Yeah, I mean, the next goal is going to really dictate the way this game goes. 4-0 is just a very tall mountain to climb at any level in soccer. Three to one, you got a different story. Contact made with Rachel Hawk, and now Nayeli Mota will kick it over to Malia Wilson. And she's heavy footed. She can really get it down there, as we've seen. Red Devils pushing the pace here as we approach the 730 mark. Played back and over, only to have a Rock Spring player intercept it. Up to Daru. Falls to the feet of Nelson. <laughs> Wilson does a handstand after getting tripped up. I mean. There's the athleticism we were talking yeah, about right there. That's the advantage I feel Evanston has over almost everybody's there. They are athletic and they are strong and they are quick. I mean, that could have easily been an ugly situation, but Wilson gets upended and pretty much does a handstand. A collision at the far sideline is going to go Red Devil way. Below seven minutes now in the first half. Three nil Tigers, but Red Devils looking to put their name or foot on the scoreboard. Nelson looking inside. Finds Hunsaker. Back to Nelson along the edge. Guarded by Moda. Nice job by Moda yet again. Moda with excellent defense. First stop in the pass, then knocking out a play, allowing her crew to get back and into position. Nelson looking for a one-hit cross. Instead, it's picked up by the Red Devils. Katie Drew again. And hit the referee. Is he going to award... I mean, the referees are part of the game, so if it hits them, it, it, it hits them, you know? And so they're going to do a Not drop sure. kick right here. And Rock, Spring with, Rock Springs with it. We are below six minutes remaining in the first half. Good clear out by Chandler. Or is that Saxon? I want to say it's Chandler. Throw in coming up. It'll be Wilson actually to kick it right now after a free kick was called. And the Red Devils 
pushing some bodies forward, just four players on their half the 50-yard line. Goes to Penelos in the middle. Makes a defender dance around her, then knocked it all the way down the center, and no one there, and now tipped up and hits a They're red devil. And handball. handball is called on Hyatt. Just over five minutes to play. Free kick coming up for Rock Springs. It'll be the goalkeeper, Alex Moeller, a senior who has been Kind of been on spring break back there, right? Had only yeah. faced one shot so far. I'm sure she'd like to stay warm and get some more action, as would the Red Devils. As Hawk forces a turnover but can't move it up the field much further. Bonnies get tangled up, and into the middle it goes, only to be taken away by a Tiger. Played around by Moses. Rock Springs very content with ro running some clock here as we are below four minutes and 15 seconds to go. Very content and very in, in, uh, deliberate with where they're going with the ball. Very smart passes indeed and also right on the target. Nice cross is headed up by Wilson. Falls to Daru. Back to Daru. Chandler on the clearing attempt. Played up to Hyatt. Hyatt looking for an open man, but just too strong of a pass as it's nearly escorted out of play, and then Solovich just knocks it out with 340 and counting. Good pressure by J.C. Bardsley in order to force Solovich to knock it out of bounds and get a good throw-in position for Evanston. Nali Mota, this is a prime example of how a throw-in right here could really set something up if she can find the right person. Plays it back to Hawk. Another throw in coming up for the Red Devils, 315 and counting. Tough contact between Solovich and Mota. Good looking throw. Goes back to Hawk. She plays it to Mota. Pass nearly taken away. Now it is. Rock Springs turns it over. Tigers knock it around their back lines and eventually move it up. Under three minutes to play. Penaloza. Booting it right back to where it came from, only to result in a Rock Spring throw in. Again, very deliberate where Rock Springs looks to put this ball. Red Devils will be back in action Thursday in Evanston for the first time this year. Girls play at 3 o'clock against Mountain View. What an exciting matchup that will be. Anytime. Evanston and the Bridger Valley area clash. It, it's a great game. You always know it regardless of the sport. Hyatt with the t an aggressive run. Almost got through that defense to try to get give uh, Evanston a chance. Whistle blows, and it's going to go Red Devil way. Just below two minutes to go. Evanston really looking like they could use a a goal right now and lift their spirits going into the half. Big kick. Cleared out for the moment. Rock Springs with it. Getting past one defender and now going all the way across the 50-yard line to Nelson. Nelson running after it and she's bodied off by Moda for the second. Then a long shot and a goal! Off that far post and ricocheted in. Nelson eyed that perfectly. And that's just one of those shots that's so right on. There's, there's not much you can do. Second goal of the game for Nelson. And the lead is stretched out to 4-0 for the team in black at home. A beautiful shot by Nelson. I mean, with her left foot... Losing balance and able to tuck it in that far post. Nothing Frankham could do. And now the Red Devils searching for a lot more answers going into the second half with under 90 seconds to play. Kenley Hintzy is going to come back on for the Red Devils, and they need some type of spark plug here as they get ready to go into the locker room. 
you got to come out of the locker room and look at it as a brand new game. Whether it is or isn't, that's how you got to look at it with that mentality. And now Rock Springs looking to apply some more pressure as there is just over a minute to go. Falls to Wilson. Moving it up the field and picked up by the Tigers. 45 seconds to go. Knocked around by Rock Springs on their attacking third as it moves up to Nelson. Nelson with the hot foot right now. Guarded by Moda. Crosses it in and it's cleared out with under 30 seconds to play. Good job by Evanston defense to stay in front of Nelson. Whistle blows and a free kick coming up with 15 seconds and counting. Rock Springs taking their time right now. They're in no rush at all. 10 seconds to go. This is a very solid, clean team that we're seeing in Rock Springs today. I mean, let's go back to the boys game. We had, what, 10 offside flags in that first half on Rock Springs boys. Zero on the girls. The first 40 minutes in the book and the Rock Springs Tigers have four goals to show for themselves. Meanwhile, Evans still, still, Evanston still search. Our children make us proud in so many ways. Show your pride today. Go Red Devils. West Star Printing and Rocky Mountain Sign, 243 7th Street, Evanston. We apologize as we are currently working through some technical difficulties with our internet connection, but hopefully we are back on track. It's halftime here at Rock Springs. A 4-0 lead for the Tigers over the Red Devils. And not a great first half to remember for Evanston, but some positives to take away. Elon, if you are Coach Barton right here, what's the biggest message to your team going into the second half? Again, I think you got to go in there as if it's a whole new game. I mean, that four-goal uh, deficit, it's big. And it's going to be hard to kind of ignore that. And the first step to coming back to something like that is going in there thinking it is a brand new game and the slate is clean, even though, of course, chances are it, it, we know the direction this is going to go, but you got to go in there with that hope. Yeah, especially when you're on the road playing a really tough Rock Springs crew. And I think you're exactly right. When you come out in the second half, you've got to – play with confidence you gotta play with pride too you know you gotta represent the school and the name on the front of your jersey in the back so for Evanston here it is about composing yourself and approaching it like hey we got 40 minutes of soccer coming up it's zero to zero right now let's see what we can muster up yeah and you never know I mean we just saw Rock Springs put up four goals and a half Evanston could go on a bit of a run on their own. Yep, and this is an Evanston team that doesn't struggle offensively. You know, no. They've got the firepower. We've seen them put up goals in a hurry, too. So you put up one, you put up two, it's a whole different game. Absolutely, and this is also a team that has scored five goals on two different occasions now, including the conference opener against Green River. We've got just under six minutes to go until the second half. We'll step aside for a quick break, and when we return, we'll get you ready for the second half. Coming up on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Evanston Red Devil Soccer. Time flies, especially when you're having fun. This is Jeremy Rex, manager at TBRS in Evanston. It's hard to believe that we've been here almost a year with our new management team and staff. Did you know that you can have your vehicle detailed, your windshield replaced, ship repair done, or get your trailer refinished or rewired at TBRS? Of course, we are a full-service collision repair shop, too. You can even change your oil and your brakes. Visit T-Bar-S today. Let T-Bar fix your car. 515 County Road, Evanston. When you're looking for one one location that is centrally located in Wyoming to host a business meeting or corporate retreat, always consider the Come On In Hotel and Suites in Casper first. With meeting rooms and amenities that everyone can enjoy at the Come On In is the best place to host events. The rustic decor, fireplaces, jacuzzis, pool, and large indoor atrium will make your event memorable. Call today and find out the ways we can help make your event a success. Come On In Hotel and Suites in Casper. Call 307-472-6300. This First Bank of Wyoming broadcast of Evanston Basketball is brought to you in part by 
Hoover Chiropractic. Dr. Todd Hoover does all the chiropractic work you need, as well as blood work, dietary supplements, a weight loss program, x-rays, and he can help you get rid of migraines and allergies. Call Hoover Chiropractic at 307-789-0043. Four unanswered goal first half for the home team, and this is the Tigers team that, coming off a two to one uh, two to one loss at Jackson in overtime the last time out. So, when Evanston heads up to Jackson in the coming weeks, now you know that's going to be a tough challenge as this Rock Springs team has played nearly a flawless first half. Well, Jackson is one of the powerhouses in the western part of the state. They won. They've won state titles. They're not just a powerhouse in the western part of the state. They are a powerhouse in the state to begin with. Uh, we just, you and I were talking during the game, and it looks like this team has played together for a while. We just had someone come over to us and say that they've been playing together since they were three years old, and it shows. Yeah, tons of chemistry all over the pitch. It, it feels like the moment the pass is played, they I already know, know where, their, um, where their teammate's going to be. And yeah. so it's just been great soccer all across the pitch for, uh, uh, for the – Rock, Rock Springs Tigers right now as the Evanston Red Devils will look to probably start this second half off with getting some offense going. And you know, you're down four goals here. Why not try and throw the kitchen sink a little bit and build some momentum that way? Because starting through defense, through offense is good when it's a one or two goal game. Four goals, you need offense. And let's call a spade a spade. This is a team that's contending for a state title. Yeah, this is a very this, strong this team indeed. This is a very strong team that is, I, I mean, I think they, we saw Kelly Walsh a couple weeks ago. I would put this team over Kelly Walsh if I was to vote a rankings or anything like that. This is a very impressive team that we've seen in the West. Probably a favorite to be at the top of the West. Kelly Walsh would be two. So uh, Evanston, but then again, we haven't even seen Jackson or Star Valley yet. So there's so much that we don't know, but I will tell you this much. This Rock Springs team looks like the real deal. Yeah, the boys fell earlier uh, to Rock Springs in a tough 2-0 loss, and now the girls on the wrong side of a 4-0 loss. So with two minutes to go in the half, we'll get you ready for the second half in just a moment. We'll be right back on this First Bank of Wyoming presentation of My Local Radio Soccer. What do you do when you lose a tooth? Put it under your pillow. Under my pillow. Or I'm like a treasure chest, so you could put it in. Why do you do that? Because then the tooth fairy, tooth fairy, tooth fairy comes. For the tooth fairy, so the tooth fairy can come get them. And then what happens? I get money. We may not be the tooth fairy, but we can still take care of your teeth. Bear River Dental in Evanston. America keeps moving and Auto Farm Chevrolet is here to help you keep rolling. Whether you need a brand new vehicle or service on one you already own, Auto Farm Chevrolet is here to lend a helping hand. Our certified mechanics are knowledgeable and our sales team takes the time to get to know you and what your needs are. Stop in today, Auto Farm Chevrolet, 624 Front Street, Evanston. Evanston's community-driven dealer. The best cement comes from Ellingford Brothers in Evanston. They've been mixing cement for every type of job for generations. Major construction, road and bridge, cement blocks, foundations, sidewalks, curb and gutter, cement steps, septic tanks and water troughs. No job is too large or too small. Make sure you get the best quality cement available at the best prices. Always get your cement from Ellingford Brothers. Call today. Ellingford Brothers. We know cement. 307-789-1515. Welcome back to Rock Springs High here at Tiger Stadium. I'm, I'm Matthew Peterson. That's Elon Olive. Big thanks to our camera operator today. Right, Elon? Absolutely. Shelby kind of came over, saw me in the cold, said, hey, I can do this for you. So she's one of the JV players. We really appreciate her taking over camera duties so uh, I can come up here and join you. Yep. So all season long, we've had such great help from both the boys and girls, JV teams, the managers, everyone you know, lending a hand to helping out the camera operation so we can give you the best possible broadcast we can. 
Buzzer sounds, and it looks like we're just about ready to start the second half. It's a 4-0 Tiger lead on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. And right now, Evanston with a lot of questions, looking for some answers, looking into the second half, and really curious to see the approach and the game plan Coach Barton sends out there in terms of the numbers she wants to send forward. you got to start finding some goals some way. Sitting back isn't going to do it. And let's see what the Red Devils draw up and try to execute after a 10-minute recess. Yeah, so it's now, again, it's all about resetting. And the number one disadvantage I think Emerson's going to have to come uh, overcome is this is a team that's played together for maybe a season or two. They're playing a Rock Springs team that's played together since they were three years old, so we just found out. And a, a, a team that, that really has some high, high aspirations. Evanston has high aspirations of their own, but they're going to have to overcome that inexperience, the relative inexperience that they have with each other. Also, again, and I hate to beat a dead horse, they've got a size disadvantage. Yep. You look at every position and you see Rock Springs has these tall, lean, prototypical soccer players. Evanston has athletes that, and that com comes in handy in its own right, but when you, the way you build up a four goal lead is through experience and, best and specialization that we're seeing from Rock Springs today. Hinsey trying to clear it out of her end. Indeed she does, up to Penaloza. Q goes back to Chandler, who really gives it a boot, all the way up to Hyatt. Hyatt lost it on the way down, and now here comes the Rock Springs Tigers. Wow, what a defensive stop by Malia Wilson. Soccer or gymnastics? I think she just <laughs> did the splits right there. She did a handstand earlier, did the splits there. Thank God this wasn't the boys' game. <laughs> Throws into Penaloza. Just over 39 minutes to go in the second half. Red Devils with a bit of urgency right now. Indeed, they need it as a nice through ball is going to find Hunsaker. Shot is saved by Franco. Wow. Took that one right to the face. Put a good stop by Franco, who just fearlessly charges Hunsaker, who we've seen her. She's got a boot. Great stop by Franco. Excellent save by the sophomore goalkeeper. Three saves today now. Knocked around the offensive end for Rock Springs and nearly saved by Wilson, but unable to corral it before exiting the field of play. Along the wing, Chandler is just strolling this ball out of play, and it'll be a goal kick now for Evanston. A little over 38 minutes remaining in the second half. About 6-12 right now. So kind of started an hour and 12 minutes ago, so we'll be finishing up probably around the 6.40, mark. Yeah, I mean, we had that 15-minute delay because the referees were a little MIA before this one as they were coming over from the JV game. And ju the junior high from Rock Springs, it's about a 10-minute drive. It's not close. So as so we found out over here, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice cross inside and just too tall for Hunsaker. It's picked up by Frankum. Decisive move from Frankum, deciding to definitely just rush out there and take care of business. Yeah, I think she learned after those two corner goals not to just stand on her line and wait for that ball to come to her to charge after it. Now an offensive chance is blocked in the air and a good save by Frankham. Nice job. Four saves on the day for Brinkley. I wonder if Coach Barton told her team in the locker room to get a little bit angry. I mean, you're in feisty. You're seeing them get a whole lot more physically aggressive than what we saw in that first half. Rock Springs moving along their 50-yard line and now poaching inside their offensive third. Hensey takes it away. Only to lose it a moment later and regained by the Tigers. Over to Moses. Moses passes off the mark out of play, and it's going to be a throw in for the Red Devils. Just under 36 and a half minutes to go in the second half. Four nil Tigers on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. 
Good ball movement now by Rock Springs. They are very content with possession and watching that clock tick, 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 tick. When you got four goals, it, it's now going to – you get the feeling this is going to be the ultimate test of the Evanston defense, see if they can kind of pitch a second half, half shutout. Hyatt reversing course. And now gets it right back to her. Good pass. Allie. Defenders on her, looking to get rid of it. Has Hawk on the wing, and that's Saxton, actually. But she's pushed off the ball onto the floor, and then it's knocked up only before, not, in, not before a whistle and a flag indicating out. Nope, they're going to continue playing. Scratch everything I just said, and now on the wing with Hunsaker. Gets past her defender. Moving inside, a shot. Off the crossbar, tipped by Frankham, and then nearly enter the net, but a crossbar prohibits it. Malia Wilson absolutely on a tear trying to pursue that one down. Good cut off by Penalosa. Great save by Frankham right there. Just a bang, bang play. Gets a paw to it, hit the upright, and then out of play. She's a sophomore, ladies and gentlemen. Makes you very excited about the future of Lady Red Devil Soccer. Yeah, especially when you're looking at that back end of the defensive end, defensive side for Evanston as we get below 34 and a half minutes. Throw in now coming up for Evanston. Well, called a free kick, actually. It'll be Wilson to do the honors. Strong kick. Hunsaker taking it away. Sprinting down the field. In the box and out of bounds. Across the goal line and a goal kick coming up for Frankham. Lately we've seen on the goal kicks either uh, Wilson or Mota take it. It looks like it's going to be Mota this time for the Red Devils. When you've got a good, uh, good kicker like Mota, and Wilson, why not use him? Penaloza trying to weave through traffic. Finds her teammate Gonzalez, who unable to get it out of their defensive zone. And nearly seven minutes played so far, and just like the first half, this ball is hanging around the Red Devil end. Is a long shot and a goal. Wow, what a curved shot in there for Moses. That one just kind of hooked and just perfectly struck. And Rock Springs, uh, they can put these three points in the bag. Yeah, adding to their lead, it's now 5-0 for the home crew. Moses, probably the goal of the game so far right there on her left foot, just bending it around the defense across Franken's, Franken's chest. And wow, what a great shot and a better finish. And now it's 5 0 Tigers, and it will be Hyatt to kick it off to restart us. Fragum should keep her head up, absolutely. She's had some great saves today. It just, that was so well struck. I don't think there's anything you can do about it. Ten shots on goal, five have been stopped by Frankham, but the other five have been tough shots. Penaloza trying to get some offensive momentum, unable to this go around, and now back over to the Tigers. Picked up by a, for a moment and now tracked down by Wilson. Wilson looking to get it out. Instead, it's a throw in. Just over 32 minutes remaining in the first half. Well, if you're Evanston, you start uh, thinking about preparation for the next conference game, which is, I think, Star Valley comes to Evanston. Uh, first Let's see the next uh yeah it'll be at that act the, the game was originally supposed to be at star valley but star valley is coming to evanston on april 13th i believe yeah so you got uh, probably start thinking about that and how you can collect some points in that conference table yeah that's what really matters when it comes to 
postseason soccer in the Cowboy State, your conference games. The other ones are just fine-tuning and getting yourself ready for your best performance at the conference stage. And conference and uh, confidence building. Evanston will get to play Mountain View. If they can get a big win over Mountain View, that's only going to build their confidence as they get ready to play a Star Valley team that we don't know a lot about, but common opponent tells us that should be a great match. Inside and cleared out for just the time being. Another shot is partially tipped at the shooter's foot, and now it's taken away and out. Just over 31 minutes remaining in the second half. Rock Springs all over the Red Devils at their home turf. As they move it down the pitch and a long shot is picked up by Frankham and it's going to be a corner kick as she went out of play with the ball. So a corner kick number three coming up. Let's see if Rock Springs can go perfect from the corner. They've got two goals off corner kicks so far today. It was just a short pass to see if they can set oh. up something. Evanson's able to defend it. Yep, Red Devils this time much better on the set-piece defense. Down low, and Frankham scoops it up to steer the troublesome Tigers away. Okay, checking in on the MyLocalRadio.com chat room. Paige Tannenbaum, the aunt of Brinkley Frankham, says Binks is a sophomore and new to soccer. She looks like she's been out there for a while. Indeed, like, she does. A strong showing so far this season for Frankham in net I, for the Red Devils. I never would have guessed that. Never would have guessed that. We had the sophomore part down, but the new to soccer was – New to us as well. And that makes, I think, what she's been able to do against some of these top flight teams even more impressive. Another save for Frankum. That's her sixth of the that's her seventh actually of the day. But Rock Springs with twelve shots on goal. You're not gonna win many games letting up that many shots. And again, that's not on Frankum. That means the defense needs to probably tighten up just a little bit more. But then again, I think Rock Springs knew exactly what they wanted to do coming into this game, and that is wear out. Off the post. Wow, what a shot and a near six goal from the foot of Nudson. She's only got one today. Look for her second. I think they wanted to come in here and wear out Evanston, and uh, it looks like the legs may be going from the Lady Red Devils after running around so much in that first half. We dip below the 30-minute mark in this second half. It's a 5-0 Tiger lead on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. As this ball gets out of play, we'll step aside for a quick break here on a First Bank Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer. <laughs> Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I had just purchased new tires at Plains Tire in Evanston. The trained tire technicians at Plains Tire expertly mounted, balanced, and aligned my new tires, so I was feeling good. While I was there, they changed my oil, checked my brakes, fixed my AC, and made sure my shocks were in tip-top shape. And with their lifetime alignment checks and tire rotations, I was ready to roll. So, thanks to Plains Tire, when two roads diverged in a wood, I took the one less traveled. Plains Tire, 157 Fair River Drive, Evanston. For more than 10 years, the professional and friendly staff at Mountain West Business Solutions has been serving customers in Wyoming and Utah. Our professional technicians live and work in communities across both states. This way, we're able to provide quick, quality service to all of our customers. We serve businesses of all sizes, and we also provide service and supplies for HP printers. Call us today to see how we can help with all your printing and copying needs. Mountain West Business Solutions, a local company with a toll-free number, 866-583-9925. Luckily for the first time all year, we've timed that break up well, not to miss any of the big <laughs> action as we're still at a 5-0 Tiger lead. A little over 27 and a half minutes to go in this one and a free kick coming up for the Red Devils who have spent very little time on the offensive half in this half. And they're not going to spend much more time as it's taken away by Rock Springs. Moses streaking down the field. Pass taken away by Wilson. Great defense by Malia to break that one up. Now a good opportunity by Penaloza as she lets Gonzalez scratch that tightrope. Walks along the out-of-bounds line, and we have a throw-in coming up for Chandler. 
Just below 27 minutes to go in this one. Throwing it down the line to Gonzalez. Goes to Penaloza wanting to find Hyatt. Ball was headed out of play, and now the Red Devils slowly inching their way down the field. And they have not spent much time over here, like I mentioned, so hopefully they can kind of park it down and find themselves a home. Evanson trying to come away with getting rid of that goose egg off the scoreboard. And they continue to tally up throw-ins along the side and making their way closer to that Tiger box. Penaloza getting inside of it, finding Hyatt. Mistimed her kick, and it's scooped up by Moeller. Alex Moeller just well, the second or third time she's really touched the ball all day long. Hopefully she's staying warm. Moda playing it over and, and finding an open Red Devil and now up to, wanting to get to Gonzalez, unable to. Chandler steps in and boots it away. Whistle blows and it's going to go against Evanston. Free kick coming up for Rock Springs. 25 and a half minutes to go in the second half. And whistle blows. Not really sure what the stoppage is regarding. Looks like they wanted to change the ball. Regardless, we're ready to restart this one now. Finds Hintzy on the defensive side and up to Penaloza. Q trying to get past one defender. Over to her other captain, Hyatt. Penaloza trying to... Make her way past the defense, but just bodied off the ball that time. Now gets her foot in there and causes some disruption. This is all grit from the Lady Red Devils right now. You see that they are just attacking with determination. They want something on that scoreboard so bad before they end. I think that's the goal for Evanston is get something out there. Yeah, plenty of time left. 24 and a half minutes to go in this one. As the big boot goes right down the Beautiful. middle. Beautiful. Finds Hyatt for a second, just couldn't hold on to it until a Tiger came in and stole it away. Toucher running down the field. Over to Moses. Moses already with one goal in this one, looking for another, but not going to get it this go around as it's cleared away. Drew does a good job kind of threading the needle and getting there to take care of it. Ball goes out of play, and it's going to be a throw in now for the Tigers. Little under 24 minutes to play. Well, Evanston will be circling the calendar. And a long shot is just off the mark, and... Goal number six not coming this go around. April 27th when Rock Springs comes to Evanston. They'll be circling the calendar wanting to prove that uh, they will have learned a thing or two by then. They will have played a Mountain View team, a Star Valley team, Jackson, Kelly Walsh, and Natrona County. Man, that Natrona County game is going to be great. It was only a one nothing win for Natrona on their turf. Evanston would like to split. Yeah, and they definitely need it too after... A tough um, loss potentially today as a long shot is just too tall and Frankham rolls it out to do a goal kick. But yeah, like we talked about, uh, they're going to have a tough um, loss today barring six goals or just make it five goals in the next 22 minutes. Um, and then they're going to go up against Kelly Walsh, which was a tough game as well out in Casper. Inside... Hunsaker back out. Nelson trying to get around the defense, crossing it in. Clear it out for a moment, but held in by Rock Springs. Passed around the box, and it's tipped and deflected out of play. So a corner kick coming up for the team in black. That's going to be their fourth corner of the match. Inside. 
airlifted inside the box and evades every head and then picked up by Frankham after a weak kick. That was the first time that they've tried that real corner kick in the second half. Last time they got, they went two for two. Good save by Brinkley Frankham to kind of shut that down. Along the sideline, Rock Springs once again on the attack. Just over 21 and a half minutes remaining. Long shot and off the crossbar. Did it hit the football crossbar it, though? I think yeah. so, yeah. Whistle blew and that's not part of the field of play. So that's out of bounds and a goal kick for Frankham. You can really tell this Rock Springs team the second half is eyeing those top shelf shots right now. They have been air mailing them upstairs all half. They might be looking at this as an opportunity to work on those more difficult shots as they feel like the three points are well within hand. Hunsaker intercepting the goal kick shot is just wide. Had a player open, but no one able to get to it and exits the field of play with under 21 minutes to go. It's a 5-0 Tiger lead on the Impact Physical Therapy scoreboard. Goal kick coming up for Evanston. Not struck very well as it gets out of play and a whistle blows and some substitutions being made by Rock Springs as they bring on a trio of new players. We'll take this time to step aside for a quick break. We'll be right back on this First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Red Devil Soccer. Wyoming is unique. When it comes to high school sports, we might travel six hours to a game, but when we get there, we know the other team, their parents, and the coaches. Wyoming is like one small town with really long streets. When your travels take you to Evanston, always stay with your friends at the Best Western Dunmar Inn. Clean, comfortable rooms, a restaurant serving healthy, delicious food, and breakfast is always included. If you're bringing the team or following the team, stay with us every time you're in Evanston. The Best Western Dunmar Inn. As one of the region's most visited websites, MyLocalRadio.com is here to serve you. Catch up on local and regional news and information. Buy, sell, or trade your good used items on the radio classifieds. Check the weather forecast or catch our live coverage of your high school teams in action, all on MyLocalRadio.com. Like us on Facebook so you never miss a giveaway and visit MyLocalRadio.com today to stream it all live. And while we are away, another Tiger goal. The lead's up to six right now for the home crew. Moses from way out just blasted it up to, uh, upstairs, top shelf. Tough stop for Frank. Got a piece of it, but not enough of it. And once again, here come the Rock, uh, the, um, Rock Springs crew as they are really forcing the issue for Evanston. It's almost personal at this point, it feels like. Yeah, now it's... It might be time to park. If you're Rock Springs, maybe park the bus a little bit. I mean, this has gotten a little bit out of hand. And, you know, you and I are the broadcasters for Evanston. We are Evanston fans. We want Evanston to win. But you got to give credit where credit is due. And Rock Springs came out here with the game plan, and they executed perfectly. Yeah, I mean, they've played phenomenally so far through 60 minutes, 60-plus 60 at this point. Oh, wow. A header off of the top, the top bar. And Hyatt clears it out and a whistle blows and it's going to be a free kick coming up for Evanston. 1840 and counting in the second half. It's a 6-0 lead. Two goals in the second half now for Rock Springs. And Evanston, a combination of playing a really good team on the road and just not playing your best soccer, that's going to be the perfect storm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this is a team that lost in overtime to Jackson. So... I think they came out here, and unfortunately, Evanston was the team that they wanted to send a message to the rest of the state against. Oh, that did not look good. Yeah, it looks like an injured player on the turf right now is Alex Bolton. Hopefully, she's okay. We'll step aside for a quick break right here on Evanston Red Devil Soccer on a First Bank of Wyoming presentation. 
There's a reason Rocky Mountain Yeti is Southwest Wyoming's number one dealer. Come in and see what all the buzz is about. Voted Best of Evanston by you. Best of Evanston in new car sales, used car sales, and Best of Evanston in service. We have the best selection of inventory in town. Paired with our legendary 20-year, 200,000-mile warranty, come see us today at one of our two locations, 100 Wasatch Road or Yeti on 3rd next to Walmart. Let us help get you on your next adventure today. Rocky Mountain Yeti, legend-driven. As we resume play, we hope Bolton's okay and back on the pitch shortly. Uh, she's currently being attended to by her coaches and the medical staff, but hopefully just maybe a stinger or landed incorrectly. Uh, we'll keep an eye on her as we are back in action, though, and Penaloza forcing a turnover. Maybe she can try and muster up some offense. Not, Nope, bodied off the ball, taken away. Now Bolton is being helped towards the school I'd imagine not putting any weight whatsoever on that left leg 17 and a half remaining in the second half it's unfortunate Bolton a junior one so of the starters today too a really strong defensive player and of course you've been waiting two years to get that start so play it back to Hensey boots it up towards Hyatt but just too much on it and it's chased after and Reeled in by the Rock Springs Tigers. Another chance. Here we go. Knocked around. Inside. Shot tipped. Blocked. Mota. And Moda has a couple of huge blocks today. She's made some fantastic plays on the defensive side of, th of things as this one is airlifted. Frankham gets a piece of it, then hits the crossbar. Whistle blows and is a flag up. It looks like it's going to go against Evanston, actually. Uh, I wonder if they're going to say she deflected it into the crossbar, meaning uh, deflection out of bounds. Well, no, that's not, that wouldn't be out of bounds, but... I mean, uh, I think she deflected oh, did, it to the, the upright. Oh, the football crossbar. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Yep, so indeed a corner kick coming up for Rock Springs right now. In the box and pushed just to over the net. 16 minutes to go in the second half and a goal kick coming up for the Red Devils. Looks like Hintzy's going to take it now for Evanston. Rock Springs using all the time in the world, and this is clearly their strength. I mean, look at the ability they have right now to just completely possess the ball in the offensive third. And that's kind of been the story of the day for Evanston. Every time they clear it out, it's received by a lady in black. Only one shot on goal all game for the Red Devils. As this one escapes the field of play and a goal kick coming up for the Red Devils as we approach the 15-minute mark in the second half. 6-0 Tigers on our impact physical therapy scoreboard. Substitutions being made here for Coach Barton. Like Katie Saxton coming back in the game. Yeah, Saxton, one of the starters, had a goal against Pinedale yeah. last time out. Saxton, a senior. This is Evanston team, by the way. Look at their roster as Rock Springs is approaching the box, but it's just littered with all ages, right? Yeah, it really senior is. Senior to freshman. It really is a balanced team, which is good because you've got leadership that can help you in these tough times. Like, they're going to need the leadership to bounce back from this, and they will bounce back. But they're going to need players like Nayeli Mota, Lauren Hyatt, Rachel Hawk to be the ones to kind of speak up to be like, hey, this is we've been here before, and we know how to bounce back. Up to Hensey, but it looks like she got a piece of an arm on it. Indeed, handball. It's going to be Tiger ball as they kick it off with under 14 minutes to go. 
This one knocked around on the offensive end. Looking inside now for Hay, but unable to track her down. And on the wing with Brewster. Offsides called, and it's going to be a Red Devil free kick as we get below 13 and a half minutes. And it looks like a trio of Tigers are going to come on to the pitch. Coach probably thinking, yep, we've got this one in hand. No, and we've already lost one starter. We don't want to risk that and losing any more. So let's go ahead and bring them out. You check out the two benches right there, Elon. Talk about trying to stay warm right now. We're seeing lots of blankets in. Some penguin style of huddling up. <laughs> Try and conceal that body warmth as it is a chilly one with this sun continuing to dip, 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 and only getting colder afterwards. It was 39 degrees when we started. That wind has also kind of picked up more mm -hmm. as the game has gone on, which never helps. And when you're stay, you know, staying stagnant on the sideline, it, it can feel like it's five degrees. Throw in going towards Chandler's way. Knocking it out only for Prophaser to find it. Lawrence long shot is well wide and not troublesome for Frankham or that Red Devil defense. Little over 12 minutes to go in this one. 6-0 for the home team. NC, who's shown to be a very good ball handler on the set pieces, is going to kick it away for Evanston. And another Tiger goes down. Yeah, she pops right up. Hopefully Bolton's okay. Haven't really seen her, but with a 6-0 lead, I mean, there's no reason for her to come back whatsoever. No. Knocked up towards Hyatt, but an awkward bounce as it fall away from her. Penaloza crossing it in. Rock Springs comes away with it. Looks like they've moved Nyali Mota to a bit of a mil midfielder position as there's four girls on the back line. You've got Chandler, Nelson, Drew, and I believe... I'm trying to see that final number. Played back all the way to Moeller, who... Has not been tested, only one shot on goal for the Red Devils, and that will definitely be a point of emphasis. Just ways to break out of offensive slumps. Bell Hofler is the fourth girl on the back line for Evanston. So both sides sending out some JV players, and personally that's something I love to see when the game's already decided. Why not give some new faces some experience and see what they're made of at the big stage? You know, that kind of happened a little bit with the Evanston Outlaws. Uh, they took a 10-run lead against the Casper Oilers and put in this unknown pitcher at the time, Clayton Moyles. He ended up throwing a beautiful three innings, and then the uh, Outlaws ended up putting him as their number two pitcher the rest of the season. So you never know. These games can get out of hand, but you could stumble onto some talent. That's a complete game changer for you. Yeah, there's just some players who have a, an ability to shine in the games and maybe not so much in practice where that's where the starting 11 or starting 10 or whatever sport you're playing is decided. Played along the back end of Rock Springs and keeping it in that time was Weinrich. Up to Hunsaker. She blows past Chandler, looks to cross it in. It's blocked partially by Wilson, and now Chandler with it and clearing it out of play. Under 10 minutes to play, and Evanston, if you're the Red Devils, you keep your head up and you fight to the whistle. You know, I got to say, since we got a 6 0 lead with the train background, you'd think maybe Rock Springs would have a nice little nickname of, I don't know, conductors or something. It's really Local a nice back. Yeah, it's a nice background here with the. Trains just going right by the stadium. The Union Pacific Railway. I'm sure there's lots of Tigers in central Wyoming now. 
Same for Red Devils in <laughs> southwestern Wyoming. Clear it out of danger for just a moment. Another kick in. It's headed towards the direction of Frankham, but the Red Devils can handle it. And they get it out to Hyatt. Big Hyatt with chance. some room. Slows it down for a second and looks to Penaloza. Penaloza, oh, had a lot of green grass in front of her, but just couldn't quite get to her. Is that Gonzalez? That was Nayeli Mota. Oh, Mota, I beg your pardon. 8.20 and counting to go in this second half. You know, this might be what we were talking about. Mota d proved herself defensively. Maybe this is what we were talking about. Barton might, uh, Coach Barton might be wondering, hey, do we have something offensively with this player too? And if she's a great defensive and offensive player, take her from the back line and put her in the mid. Yep, absolutely. It's a, another opportunity not only for the bench players to maybe learn a little bit about themselves and what they're capable of, but hey, maybe we've got this some we got this player in the wrong position. Throw in on the way for Rock Springs. Nice one touch, but it goes to the Red Devils and it's knocked out for the moment. Up to Q. Penaloza biting through and Making your way past the defender, up to Hyatt, looking to Moda. Red yeah. Devils with some room. Hyatt stumbling over the ball, and it's kicked away and picked up by the Tigers. Cleared out by Barry. And now Barry takes a nice pass and makes her way up the field. Saxton clears it out. Just over seven minutes to go. Keep your heads up, ladies. You can do it. Wind beginning to pick up here as we approach the final minutes of this one. Throw in now on the way for Yantis. Aubrey Yantis, just a sophomore, but getting some minutes in this one. And a collision just outside the box warrants a whistle, and it looks like we're going to have a big free kick coming up for Rock Springs. Katie Drew might have pushed uh, her arms out a little bit on that collision, and uh, I think that is going to pretty much result in a long PK. Yeah, I mean, this is just situational soccer right here. For Evanston, this game's in hand, right? You know the result, so can we get better at defending set pieces? And if you're Rock Springs, it's the exact same thing. Can we get we, better at doing it? Can we get better at executing when it may be not a six-goal lead, but a one-goal lead or a tie game? When you're playing a, a Jackson or a Thunder Basin in a big game. Weinrich and Yantis lining up like they're the ones to kick. Let's see who actually puts a boot on it. It'll be Weinrich. Up and over, off the upright. Wow, Rock Springs for six goals. They've also hit the post a handful of times. That was nearly a beauty. Nali Mota with a good clear out, forced clear out, forcing Rock Springs to kind of reset, but they're off and running already again. Just under five and a half remaining. Ball gets out of play, and it's going to be a corner kick for Rock Springs. Their sixth of the game. She actually had to move the flag out of the way so she could get her run up. Played in, over to Chandler, kicks it out for a second, and now knocks it out of bounds for a throw-in. It's going to stick with the Tigers. I think they may actually be giving it to Evanston. Oh, is it Evanston? Kind of a bang-bang bang, bang situation. I thought the flagman pointed towards the left. Yeah, so it's going to be a Red Devil throw-in, it appears. Or a free kick? Not now we get throw the throw in. in. Okay. Chandler will throw it in along the side. And bump down. And I don't think that ball ever got in bounds. And I think this is what, yeah. So now it's going to be a Rock Springs throw in. Across the goal line, and it looks like we're going to have a, another corner kick coming up. A little under four minutes to play. 
I want to invite you to join us on Thursday live from Evanston. Girls will take on Mountain View at 3 o'clock. Boys at 5 o'clock. It'll be two different streams because they will be played at two different sites. Yeah, a lot going on. You can listen to us. You can listen to Colin Holt for the Mountain View broadcast. But I'd like to thank you join us for the Red Devil broadcast. <laughs> oh, what was that? It was barely pushed out of the corner, and then there was a foot race to the ball. I've, I've never seen that before. Whistle blows. Well, I know one thing. If you're the one that's taking the corner kick, you can't be the first one to touch it after you mm. play the ball. One of those situations where you just got to stare yeah. at it and wait for someone to come get to it. Just under 3.15 remaining. So the Red Devils for the boys and girls are going to come away 0-1 here, uh, winless, against a strong Rock Springs team. And boys fell 2-0. Girls looking like they're on the wrong side of a 6-0 finish. And for Evanston... There's just going to be a lot to go to the drawing board and things to improve on as you get ready to start hosting games. And you really got to capitalize when you're playing at your home field. Absolutely, like we've seen Rock Springs do here. Uh, the big difference in the two games in my mind is that's that boys game. It's a 2-0 loss, but that was much closer than 2-0. Yeah, some early goals from Rock Springs kind of propelled them to a strong start, and they were able to just hold on to it. Evanston had some... Great looks in the second half, but unable to knock any in. And this one, it's been it's been a complete performance by the Lady Tigers. So you gotta yeah. take your hats off to them. You really do. This is a really strong Rock Springs team, and they're definitely gonna be right there, ready for the state regionals and playoffs. So Rock Springs would improve to two zero and two with a victory. As we get below two minutes. Meanwhile, for Evanston, they're going to drop to 2 0 and 3. So the Red Devils with six points alongside the Tigers, but two different uh, stories going on here as one team is really surging. And for Evanston, they got to try and get some momentum as they get back into the swing of things against Mountain View on Thursday. And then, of course, on the 13th, they'll be back in conference play against. Star Valley, and I believe that game has actually been changed to be in Evanston. So it's going to be good to be home for the next couple of the contests. Yeah, especially you start, what, the first four games of the season on the road? And five. Yeah, first five, and now we're getting yeah, a, a bit of a conversation between the official and a Red Devil player. With 117 remaining, it has the clock paused. I'm not really sure what it's regarding, but... So that was the captain, Lauren Hyatt, talking with him. So she, she's the only one that can actually talk to the referee, so she might be looking for clarification on something. Uh, there was nothing really to be concerned about. I think there was just maybe a question from Hyatt. Ball moved around the play. And it's knocked out of bounds. Uh, the clock has not started. There we go. Now the start. The clock starts. Yeah, wind really began to pick up. So with a minute left, pretty good timing for these two sides to get in the bus and really reflect on what improvements can be made after this one for the Red Devil crew. And it's, a, it's not a long ride considering they've been to Pinedale, they've been to Casper, but it's long enough to maybe talk as a team and talk about, okay, this is what we could do. We did really, really well. This is how we can improve the next time we see them because we will see them again, and it will be in Evanston City Field where the girls' regional tournament is going to be played. Uh, yeah, if you're Evanston, it's not time to panic yet, but you need to capture some momentum to help them out. Almost a seventh goal. Good dive by Brinkley Franco. Under 20 seconds to go now. This game will end at the buzzer. They don't add any time on. Ping-ponged around for the moment on the defensive side of Evanston. And three seconds to go, and that will just about do it. The Red Devils fall in Rock Springs, 6-0 your finish. Tigers on top. We'll recap this one with our Jimmy John's Freaky Fast recap and our Dr. McKay Franco Precision Play of the Game when we return.
In May of 2019, Uinta County School District Number One became the first school district in Wyoming to achieve a certified Level One on high reliability schools by the Rosanna Leadership Center. We're focusing on three levels: Level One is a safe and collaborative culture; Level Two, effective teaching in every classroom; and Level Three is a guaranteed and viable curriculum. We are certified Level One in safe and collaborative culture. This is Superintendent Ryan Thomas. Congratulations to everyone in our district. Keep up the great work. Uinta County School District Number One: Pathway to Excellence. Welcome back to Rock Springs High. Let's get into our Jimmy John's Freaky Fast recap where fresh and fast meet every single day in Evanston. And this one was all Rock Springs start to finish. They got the scoring started five minutes in. They would add on four goals in the first half to close out the for opening 40 minutes, a 4-0 lead going into the second half. Then in that second half for Rock Springs, you look at Moses for the Tigers. She knocked in two of her own, and that propelled the Rock Springs side to a 6-0 victory to improve their record to 2-0-2 as Evanston drops to 2-0-3 themselves, and that will do it. That is our Jimmy John's Freaky Fast Recap. Always a great, delicious sandwich right there on Front Street in Evanston. Go check them out next time you're hungry. We'll step aside for another quick break, and when we return, we'll get ready for our Dr. McKay Franklin Precision Play of the Game. The big difference that sets Freeway Tire apart from other tire stores is the fact that we care. We care about the customer service we provide, we care about selling quality products at fair prices, and we care about your vehicle. So when you're looking for tires or having work done on your vehicle, everything from maintenance to major repairs, make sure you take it to the company that really cares, Freeway Tires, on Bear River Drive in Evanston. Stop in today or schedule an appointment with us online at freewaytires.com. Gee, Tommy, you look amazing. Did you try something different with your enamel? No way. I wouldn't do anything to alter these pearly whites, but I did see Dr. McKay Frankum, who told me if I didn't floss, I could miss up 35% of food particles. Really? He told you that? Yep, and you know what? He's 100% right. I started flossing, and now I look better than ever. Wow, I want to see Dr. McKay Frankum. Well, give him a call. 307-789-8910. Easy to remember, right? That's super easy. Dr. McKay Frankum at 307-789-8910. I'll call today. Welcome back to Rock Springs, a 6-0 victory for the Tigers. And let's talk about our Dr. McKay Frankham precision play of the game. Elon, any plays jump out to you? Uh, honestly, the performance by Brinkley Frankham. She was uh, absolutely spectacular today. She usually is. Just some great strikes on the other end. Uh I mean, great strikes on yeah, the other end. Yeah, it really end. is. No, no, no goalkeeper in the state of Wyoming could have stopped some of these shots. So she is our Dr. McKay Frankham precision play of the game. All right, Elon, before we sign off, we want to thank some Red Devil supporting businesses. Auto Farm, Chevrolet, Dr. McKay Frankham, West Star Printing, Rocky Mountain Yeti, Hoover Chiropractic, Evanston Regional Hospital, the Come On In and Casper, Plains Tire, Mountain West Business Solutions, the Best Western Dunmar Inn and Legal Tender Restaurant, Freeway Tire, Rocky Mountain Sign, Uinta County School District No. 1, Ellingford Brothers, Trona Valley, Val Valley Federal Credit Union, Bear River Dental, and by T Bar S Body Shop. All right, Red Devil fans, we look forward to having you alongside us this upcoming Thursday afternoon. We'll get started at 2.40, and then we'll have a doubleheader against the Mountain View Buffaloes. I'm Matthew Peterson. That's been Elon Olive. Until next time, go Red Devils. The preceding has been a wholly owned production of MyLocalRadio.com and Cook Brothers Broadcasting, no portion of which may be used or rebroadcast without the express written consent of Old West Media Incorporated. Thank you for joining us on this First Bank of Wyoming presentation of Evanston Red Devil Sports on MyLocalRadio.com. Until next time, go Devils!